Can teach monkeys to fly, fly better than that. that. Good evening, everybody. How are we doing today? I have... I'm having one of those days right now where I feel like I've had a very long day, but I actually haven't because I woke up really late today. I decided to give myself a lion. <sighs> Sky outside my window right now, by the way, is just weird. It's like there's this big, very, very wispy, soft sort of cloud, and it's got a bunch of smaller ones in front of it that are slightly darker in colour. And it's sort of sunset, so everything's sort of partly orange, partly sort of bright turquoise. And it, on, I tell you what, it just looks like God's graphics card has failed. It really does. It just, you know, <laughs> I don't know what to fucking make of it. <laughs> anyway, welcome aboard, everybody. It's Friday, so that means we do flying on Fridays. I think I wrote that down somewhere. On a, on a schedule thingy. I, th I think all I've got it down there as is actually as part of the channel feed. I really should put it on the actual, you know, panels bit. But hey ho. I did say I was going to be flying to Cairo in the 767 today, but I just don't have the energy. I really don't. I That's like a fucking six hour flight, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So, and I, I really can't be bothered. So, yep. Yeah. Here we are in this thing instead. I um, it's got its issues, the IXCG, but um, I'm hoping we can overcome those, adapt and overcome, you know. Um, so here we are, and in South Africa, I've uh, got a Comair livery which I made myself. As you can see, I slapped that together in about 15 minutes <laughs> earlier in GIMP, <laughs> but it is fairly accurate. It's based on Zulu Sierra Oscar Alpha, Alpha Romeo, which is a actual Boeing 737-300 that Comair operate and uh, yeah there it is um, I made some changes to the original BA um, livery that comes with the with the plane as well but um, yep it's it's uh, it's about as good as I could honestly get it um, the, 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 the registration's correct it's in the right place I altered the colors a bit because I felt they looked a bit off and um, I got the Comair Limited logo on the nose, and also I had to chop off the blue bit on there because the the whole nose cone apparently is white on the Comair jobbies, um, and that was really fucking irritating. <laughs> I don't mind saying, but I've done it now, so all's good. Um, oh, and I almost forgot to put OAR on the um, 
on the nose gear doors as well. I almost forgot that. Would have looked a bit silly otherwise. So anyway. Oh, I felt sounded really defeated in my last morrowing. Well, that's because I was defeated completely. The the island beat me. I just I couldn't follow the directions and I got lost and I got bullied by Kagutis and yeah I didn't actually find the cave I was supposed to find. So yeah, <laughs> it sounded defeated because I was defeated <laughs> fairly soundly. Um, so anyway, yeah, here we go. We're at Cape Town at the minute. We're in Cape Town. Those fucking mountains in that background, by the way, look kick-ass. Um, you can't see much of it because there's a, um, you know, there's haze and stuff. It's not like the clearest weather in the world right now down here at Cape Town, apparently. Um, hang on, maybe I'll just refresh the weather and see what happens. Because it wasn't like this a minute ago. Um, plug it. No, environment weather. Oh, that's why. Read weather right now. I oh, know it looks like it's okay. Whatever, it's just a bit cloudy right now in um, in Cape Town. But anyway, there's a whole shitload of gorgeous-looking mountains back there. Uh, I tell you what, it looks so much uh, like the over all, the overall ground textures in, in prepared are better with all bex and all that garbage installed. But I tell you what, the mountain meshes just look so much better in X-Plane. They really do. Those are all flat and rubbish in um, in prepared. They're all pointy and big and awesome, though, in, in X-Plane. I love it. Anyway, and that's without, like, HD mesh installed or anything. That's just out of the box stock. Anyway, I don't have any ground handling profiles for this thing. Um, Josh sent me a link to one yesterday, and I forgot to install it before um, the clock struck 8. So, uh, you know, never mind. And today we are going, as the ticker tape thing suggests, if you bother to read it, but we're going from Cape Town down the coast to Port Elizabeth and then from Port Elizabeth possibly up to um, um, F-A-L-E I forget what this actually called it's got a funny name it's named after a person if I recall correctly uh, hold on, I'll look it up airport King Shaka International, that was the one Yeah, you'd think that'd be easy to remember but actually I, I apparently it's not so there you go. We're on Vatsum as well, so we might have some online traffic, although there, there isn't really very many planes down in this end of the world, this hemisphere. Oh, look, there's a ship over there. And the motherfucker's moving! So that plug-in does work that adds the ships. Nice. Um, so yeah. I've been wondering about that, actually. I'd installed that a while ago and hadn't seen any ship traffic about, so anyway... Yep, we're going down to Port Elizabeth, and then, if I can be bothered, we'll go from Port Elizabeth up to King Shaka. Because the flight we're doing at the minute, which is Com Air 321, it's actually does, it's, it's two sectors, the whole thing. First one goes from here to, um, to Port Elizabeth, and then they go up to King Shaka, and then they come back down again. So... Yeah, there you go. That's what we're doing today. I figured it was a bit more interesting than maybe just, you know... Flying all the way to fucking Egypt for six hours. I don't know. We'll do that at some point. I need to before the flight disappears. But, um... Mm -mm. Whatever. Today I felt like I didn't want to. So... Mm. Anyway, here we are. This scenery is the exact scenery, by the way, that I have in um, P3D. Um, because the NMG scenery for um, a lot of the South Africa airports also happens to work in X-Plane. So the only thing it seems to be missing is the um, the ground textures, like the um, the orthophoto um, that scenery texture, what, what do you call it. They seem to have been left out um, as compared with the prepared version, but I think the, the reason for that may possibly be because a lot of people use photo scenery for X-Plane and um, those can kind of interfere with each other sometimes if you leave it in there, so... I suppose that's fair enough. Doesn't look too bad, though. I mean, you know, it's not brilliant, but, uh, you know, there's not a lot of other um, sort of uh, South Africa scenery going, really, to be honest. Um, so, yeah. Hey. So, here we are in the Ixeg. As the guys who made it prefer to call it, actually. Everyone else just calls it IXEG. I think Igseg kind of sounds a bit snappy at first, if you ask me, but hey-ho. Um, 
and uh, I hopefully it won't misbehave itself today. I kind of made a big deal about how it, it had been doing weird shit with me, and then yesterday when we actually flew it on the stream, it, did, it of course made me look silly, didn't you, X Egg? You had to do that, you bastard. You made me look very silly by not not failing at all until the very end when I did something silly with the FMC. So, yeah. Oh well. Uh, so let's see. Oh, what is it? my frame rate suddenly just went all all the pieces completely there. I don't really know why. Anyway, how are we all this evening? Who have we got in here? Hand Hunter, Japcot. Ooh, I haven't seen you in a while. Um, Django, you're always here. You never leave. Uh, Cybergal, bloody pleasant. Hello, Spider Cat, uh, Bernard. Bernard as coffee. Interesting username. <laughs> Dead aim dino. Welcome aboard, everybody. Anyone else I missed? Lockman as well. Uh, the regulars are starting to turn up now. Good stuff. Right. So, let's do this, shall we? Uh, da -da 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 preferences? Uh, I think this is okay. You can teach. We're using Monkeys metric. Better than we have no winglets. We, I like, I kind of, uh, the camera shake is probably going to get old really fast, but I'm, I'm enjoying it for now, so I'll leave the camera shake on. Um, you can teach. Draw vortices. Monkeys. And the steam gauges. Okay, good stuff. So, uh, pre-flight. Right, cold and dark, that's fine. Uh, ooh, hang on a minute, what's the time it's supposed to be for this you flight? You can teach. Monkeys to fly better than that. Departure time is like 0835 Zulu, so I better change this. Where do we go for that? Here we go. This is a this is a flight by the way that's only run on the weekends as well, so um yeah. For some reason I don't really know why, but it's a Saturday Sunday jobby. It's not Saturday at the moment, but you know, whatever. I could do what I want, fuck you. Uh <laughs> so we want about it departs at 0835 Zulu, so we'll go with like 0800 as our starting up time. There we go. Close enough. Nice. All right. All right, and pre-flight is all good. And the, you don't really uh, the pre-flight pre-flight bit here seems to be honestly a bit redundant, honestly, apart from the start of options, because all this you can do in the ground handling page, the ground services page here. So if we connect ground power unit. There. Can't open the, any of the doors because they don't work in this version apparently, which is a bit of a shame. But hey, I'm not really going to complain. I don't mind. The Fly J Sim doesn't have working doors either, and I think that's a great plane. So, um, yeah. Sorry if you're getting buffering. Uh, I don't believe it's my fault for once. My OBS is telling me that everything's fine at my end. So, okay. So we want how much fuel do we want today? According to Sim Brief, we want. 7.5 tons. That was easy. And they're all reload realistically, I suppose. Oh. Load sheet. Can stay as it is, because if I randomize it now, it will reset everything. I remember that from last time. Okay, so yeah, we'll just leave that as is. Now we've got 39.98 tons. Zero fuel weight. Elevator trim. So it's 3.6 now, but the gross weight's going Monkeys up because we're being refueled, so it might not be the same later, I don't know. But anyway, unless it's already calculated it in advance, which would be very clever of it. Right, there we go. Batteries on. Ground power is on. You'll have to let me know about the audio, fellas. Um, I, guys and gals, actually. There are more than a few females who follow this channel. For reasons best known to themselves. <laughs> that goes for everybody, really. <laughs> okay, window heaters are all on. Oh, all, all, all on? Really? No, the the window heaters are all on. Speak English, as opposed to English. Recirc fan. Open that. Open that. No, cruise altitude today is flight level 290. Apparently, according to Simbrief, you might have been a bit over enthusiastic when choosing our cruise flight level it likes to do that sometimes um, but we'll see seatbelt signs can go on the exit lights are armed jolly good etc etc the position lights can go on your damper I'll switch you on just, just so I don't forget later 
and uh, yeah, okay, that's all right. That's all good. The screens and stuff are coming on, so let me align these. This is our navigation system. If you're not in the know and you're looking at all this and thinking, what the fuck is this stuff and how does it work? This is our navigation system. You have to align it so that the plane knows where in the world it is and can tell you on the map thing. Um, and I've just switched this over to heading slash status. Um, and at the minute it's in status because it's not aligned yet and it's telling us how many minutes are got to go until it all aligns up properly. So it's seven minutes now to go. The computers down here have switched on, which means we can start putting in data. First of all, we've got to tell the aircraft where it is. It's at Cape Town. And we'll take the GPS coordinates and paste them into there so the IRSs, which is what these things up here are called, those things, they can align on our current location, which is there. And then go to route, and we're going for... Whoop. Well, out of, purely out of habit, I put nearly... I started with an E there for England. Um... We're going from Cape Town, and we're going to Port, Is Port Elizabeth. I almost said Princess Elizabeth there, and that would be a bit strange. We're, going, we're flying directly to Princess Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Why is Elizabeth hard to say? I don't know. Leave me alone. I need a drink. <laughs> You're really quiet with the packs in this thing, with the air conditioning switched off, but as soon as you do switch the air conditioning on, it's it's obnoxiously loud, so I've got it switched off for now. You can teach monkeys <sighs> to fly better than that. Port Lizzie, we'll just have to call it that from now on. Jesus Christ, okay, anyway. Our flight number is Comair 321. Um, it's wearing British Airways livery, because that's who they're owned by, but... You will know we have a Comair Limited logo on the nose. So, as a result, is what our call sign is. And we go to route. It's a really weird route, this one. We don't join any airways at all. We just go direct to a bunch of waypoints along the coast. It's, I'm not going to question the sanity of it. It's just what Simbrief gave me. All the suggested routes it came up with were that. So, presumably, that's what they fly IRL. Because that's, that's where it usually draws its, its data from. <sighs> oh dear. Uh, Gopher could do an audiobook because Gopher's pretty good at reading aloud. In fact, he's very good at reading aloud. Me and Variax, on the other hand, we're shit at it. We're really bad at trying to read stuff aloud. So. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd look forward to the idea of doing an audiobook. Anyway, so let me just uh, grab the data for this. Okay, it's okay. So it goes like this. It goes octed. I think it's spelled like that. Yeah, it is. I'm curious to see how the plane will handle this fairly fucking weird route. To be honest with you, because uh, I suspect it might break something, but we'll see. Octed, and then you go zugol. Uh, G, O, L. And then you go direct to Aximu. And then you go direct to Uvguk. These 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 are some fantastic waypoint names. Uvguk. How do I fucking spell that? <laughs> Uvguk. Okay. U K. There we go. And then direct to Oxet. Not to be confused with Octed. Oc. Set. And then you go direct to Pev. Papa, Echo, Victor. Boom. Activate. Execute. Does my takeoff page work? It does, okay, because I got a bug where my takeoff page wouldn't work previously. 1.02 is out. Oh, for fuck's sake, you, are you actually joking? After, after having just... Uh, you, you're actually taking the piss. Are you... Oh my god. Okay. Did I get... Yeah, of course I did. Of course! I, thanks for that one, Eggseg, you, you trolls. You would release the update just as I'm bloody starting a flight. You you. Oh, my days. Uh, okay, let's have a look. I believe we can possibly update it without having to leave the sim because of the clever way they do their updates. But alright, let's, let's, let's have a look at this then. 
Oh, thanks. You just. <laughs> I was gonna say, what's the code? You just pasted it to me. Nice. Get in. So, we're gonna have to redo all of this, I'm afraid. But um, it's for the best. Trust me. Uh, right. Gizmo. Windows. Hotfix. Paste. Update. My, my Arnold Schwarzenegger impression is not that good. It, it used to be good, but it's sort of gotten a bit out of practice now. So now it's just plain old embarrassing. What's the change log on this then? Version 1.0.2 introduces the following fixes. Solves issue where cockpit windows could would not open under certain conditions when they should... Oh yeah, that was quite a funny bug actually, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, that was weird. Um, you couldn't open the windows unless you switched the air conditioning over to a different mode or something daft like that. Um, entry of high zero fuel weight numbers now accepted and fixed. Solves issue where FMC weight entry got changed between kilograms and pounds. Fixes an issue where N1 limit was not going to cruise during VNAV cruise. Clicking on FMC after pulling up menu now displays an itref page. Yeah, because previously you clicked FMC on the menu, it didn't do anything. Um... Packs now adjustable by a sound slider. Oh, fucking finally. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Uh, and now we have to hit reboot. Okay. And hopefully it should be okay, because last time, when I, I when I installed the previous hotfix, it did some weird shit with my preferences files, and that's what broke the takeoff page. So I think in theory we might be okay now. Theoretically. What else is there before we go any further? Um, vertical speed indicator now works in replay mode. Yeah, whatever. Uh, strobe lights now work in replay mode. Engine fire handles no longer no longer cause soft crash. Well, that's a bad one. Um, blinding effect now removed. We will reconsider our approach on this later. Yeah, I, I didn't know what they were going for. That, that was a very weird effect. Um, fixes soft crash when adding a star on the right side CDU. Huh, really? Interesting. I didn't know that was a thing, but there you go. Fix this soft crash when deleting a disco twice while in plan mode. I think I might have run into that one once or twice. Um, adjusted checklist legibility in darklit scenarios. Solves an issue where Navigraph data cycle information was not displayed correctly. Lights, light test fixed to work fully in cold and dark. Oh, is that the case? Uh, oh, it's if you start with the cold and dark panel state thingy. Okay, fair enough. Um... Stop a stupid pop up, go away. Um, light test, yeah, yeah. Solves issue where spoilers would come up on touchdown even when not armed. Enables full airplane shadow when in the inside views. Well, apparently not because I don't see any shadows under those wings unless there's an option now for that or what preferences. Air conditioning, airflow volume. Fucking get in! Alright, I can turn the master volume up a bit now. Well, actually, I might leave that as is and put turn the cockpit sound volume up a bit. There we you go. Can teach. Oh, Mine nice. Is to fly better than that. Passengers, you may now have air conditioning on the ground because the, the noise isn't going to irritate me anymore. Hooray! Um, so we do that right way. Might as well. Uh, Pre flight. Doodly doodly do, yeah, forget all that nonsense. Ground services, connect ground, power unit, air supply. Yeah, 7.5, realistic. And that's okay. So if I now just whack on the battery, turn on that, and then, well, do all the other, other stuff here quickly. Do 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 uh, galley power. Do do do. Arm those, seatbelts on, motherfuckers. Window heaters. And recirc fan. Open, open. You can teach open monkeys to fly, fly better than auto. that. We have pack sounds that aren't ridiculously overpowering. Oh, look, you've got the ground equipment too. Nice. Um. Get in. Nice. Because it was just, it was, uh, let me turn the slider up. You can this is what it was like. Monkeys to fly better than that. 
That's what it was like before. You, it drowned out literally everything. You couldn't even hear the engines over the top of that. And it basically just sounded like I needed to put a noise gate on my microphone too, which was just strange, but now it's sort of actually reasonable, which is pretty cool. Okay, so... You can teach monkeys <sighs> to fly better than that. I'm missing shitloads of... Uh, chat messages by the way because I've only got two monitors I need a third really just dedicated to chat so I can see what you, you're all talking about oh I can open the window hooray which makes the packs louder for some reason curious but okay um you can't tell what sound I'm talking about. I mean, you sure, really? I mean, I'm not. It's not the the sim sound isn't muted or anything. Uh, preferences. You can teach up monkeys down, to fly up, better than that. Down, up, down, up, down. Pack sound are really that loud on the flight deck of a real 737. I don't care. <laughs> it's irritating. I can't hear anything else. I can't even hear the engines properly or anything. It just pissed me off, frankly. Monkeys to fly better than that. Don't need a constant hissing in my ears. I'm, I'm not. I'm not flying a real 737. I'm flying a pretend one. I get to change the rules, damn it. For, for for streaming and recording vo audio balancing reasons, I'm choosing to uh, lower it. Oh, we just hit five thousand, did we really? It still says four th four nine eight eight on my screen. Fair enough. Nice. Cheers, guys. Be nice if we had. Well, I actually, you know, if we had five thousand people watching, it would be anarchy. So maybe, maybe we, maybe that's probably for the best. But hey ho, <laughs> thanks everybody anyway. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Um, well, that's nuts. Five thousand people more, give or take, have, have pressed the follow button on me, rambling about random bullshit while playing video games badly. That's just it boggles my mind. It truly does. I mean, five thousand people. That's like an it completely. I just can't compute that number. That's like the population of a small town, for fuck's sake. That's incredible. Anyway, it's like a stadium full of people. Jesus. Anyway. Um, I'd be, I'd, I'd th I think I'd put up with the pack sound a little more if it actually air-conditioned my room in real life as it did it. I mean, that I, I'd be like, okay, fair enough, I, I can put up with it. But right now it's fucking freezing in here, and I could do with a bit of air-conditioning, but I don't have any. So, there you go. There you go, flight, flight sim peripheral maker people. There you go, make a, make a pl USB air conditioner that reacts to the temperature settings in the plane. Go on. There you go. You can you can there's one for you. I'll buy that. Um What did I have for dinner? Uh pasta. I uh, fried nothing terribly interesting. Uh right, anyway. I was looking at the rest of the change log or anything else? A lot of this to be honest with you is not stuff that I had issues with, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, spoilers, blah blah blah. Full airplane shadow when inside views. I didn't. Yeah, I was looking for a thing for that, but I can't see one here. Interesting. Okay. Well. Uh, adjusted uh, legibility. Blah blah blah. Loke and GS flags don't display anymore when station is still out of range. Instead, the deviation point is removed from the scales. Fair enough. That was irritating, I have to admit. Let me. Oh shit! You know what? Monkeys. To fly While we're sat here, gabbing away, let me just align this bullshit so that's doing at least doing something while we sit here talking about nonsense. Um, <gasps> would you look at that? Pressing FMC actually does something, and it actually starts on the menu page now instead of on the um, 
the perf in it page for some weird reason. That's ah oh, nice, neat, 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 neat. Still got the wrong air out, but it won't matter. Um, so we want to go F A C T. Let's just do this again. GPS left. Bingo, bango, bongo. F A C T. Uh, F A P E. Done. We are come here. Uh, three, two, one. I wish the little thing with the numbers on that worked, because then you, you what the, what's normally there in a, on a real yoke is a bunch of little number sliders you can scroll through, and you can basically put your flight number on there so that you can remember what your flight number is um, if you're at, at a glance. It's quite useful. Uh, but anyway, oh yeah, then root, and then we're going to do all this nonsense again. Okay, so was it started with octed? I think octed, and then something else, and something else, and something else. What else is here? Protection against some soft crashes happening just before touchdown. Removed a way to skip the alignment time of the IRS unit. Waypoint altitude, speed restriction, entry overhaul. Swaps inverted Swaps inverted the key commands for spoilers. Okay, I couldn't get the key commands for spoilers to work full stop, so. Maybe maybe it does work now, look. Let's give it a try. Yeah, no. Nine dice is still not fucking working. Whatever. Um, oh, you know why it's probably not working, actually, having said that? It's because I had to redo all of my preference files, which means I don't think... I might have forgotten to put the um, joystick assignment for the spoilers in here somewhere. Uh, let's see. So, that is extend. Uh, spoiler, 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 spoiler. Is where are the speed brakes extend. One. And retract one. Oh, hello. Oh, it's still backwards. What the fuck? I thought they said they fixed that. Unless I've put it in backwards, I might have done. Yeah, that's supposed to be retract. Button 18 is retract. Button 16 is extend. But it's not actually extending the spoilers, it's backwards still. Are they sure they fixed that? Because I'm not so sure. Whatever. Um, Alright, was that it? Uh, yeah, that was it. So, still nothing on VNAV not working unless you put in an arrival. Is that just not a bug? Is that like that on the real plane then? What, what, what am I supposed to make of that? Because that's fucking weird and it's been like that ever since the release. I don't know, we'll try, we'll try, we'll try engaging VNAV before putting an arrival in again and see what, if they've, if they've fixed that and it's just sort of not listed here or I've missed it or something. But, uh, yeah. That's my chief fucking annoyance with this plane, to be honest with you. None of the other stuff they've fixed, but it, but that thing. So. Hey ho, alright, so let me get this, this route back up here. Okay, Octed and then Zugol. And then Aksamu. And then Ovguk. And then Oxet. Activate. Execute. Alright. That really should go to Perf in it, I think, rather than take off, but. I, I don't know. I don't know as much as the guys that made this thing, so... Um... What the... Okay. That was a bit weird, but alright. Perf. I think we're fueled up now, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Good. So... Where's this? Alright, gross weight is... 47.5. What the? Yeah, oh no, okay, right, we're good. And reserves are. I forgot, so we'll just put one. Cruise out is 290. And did the transition majigger. Altitude is here, what I can't remember. Let's have a look at a chart, shall we?
it's 7500. Execute that. I, mean, I might have some actual wind data today, which is which would make a nice change. So. somewhere. There we go, right. So, uh, average wind is 24579. Isodev is plus six, I think. There you go. Alright, I actually filled out all the info probably this time. Look at me. <laughs> N1 limit, that's fine. Take off. Speed's done. And trim is not what we it's not that. We don't use that, we use this, so 3.6. Let me just set that now. If I could actually see the arrow, that would be good. There we go. 3.6, so. About there. Right, good stuff. Alright then, we're still waiting on this. Three minutes. I guess we should put we could push some noisy buttons. That aren't making a lot of noise. But in theory they're noisy buttons. Let me just, you know, let me do some more fiddling with the sound. That's a bit better. You can nice, see? okay. Monkeys better. better than that. We can press these buttons. Christmas tree, everything lights up. It's amazing. Oh. oh. Camera turning around backwards, not good. That and then that. Press that. We can ring the fire bell. Oh, it's just like school all over again. And, uh, where's the... Oh, yeah, you. That's still really quiet, that thing, actually. The GPWS test, whatever. The, wind, the GPWS test is kind of irritating, anyway. It's just probably for the best that it's quiet. <laughs> Why is everyone talking about cooking skills? Well, don't ask me, man. <laughs> I ain't got a clue. I think it is a bit quiet actually. Hold on, let me just turn up the explain volume just a tad. There we go. Maybe that'll make a difference. There's not a lot going on right now though, so it is going to be a bit quiet at least until we start things up and running. Take a look around the outside. Oh yeah, let's be all professional. Let's do a, let's do a walk around. Hell yeah. So there you go. Like I said, it's a skin I made. It's not perfect. I also don't have my texture resolution set to like the r most ridiculous high settings, so that doesn't help. But yeah, like I said, I deblued the nose cone. Um, I put the Comair logo on the side, OAR on there as well. The registration, change the blues hue slightly. Um, ZS OAR on the back there as well. Um, it looks good to me. It looks filthy, but that's fine. I like it filthy. Um, Cape Town International Airport. There you go. Not the prettiest scenery in the world, but it'll do. There's the APU uh, exhaust. It all looks fine. What I think. Are the uh, engines windmilling? They are slightly, uh, <laughs> very good. Oh, caution. 
Do not open inboard fan cowl until leading edge slats are retracted and deactivated. See instructions inside outboard door. Warning, stand clear of hazard areas while engine is running. Oh, no shit. Caution, do not open inboard fan cowl. Yeah, yeah. Engine oil access. And, uh... No people are allowed near this engine, apparently. But actually, no, that's the male logo, isn't it? Like you get on toilets. So apparently only females are allowed near this engine. So anyway, there you go. That's the exterior done. Oh, it's finally aligned. Get in. All right, so... I, can I... Uh, they, well, they didn't mention it in the fixes, so I guess I can't do the plan on the other screen. Um, I'll have to do it on this side. Plan. Turn up the range. Only other thing we need to do is we actually need to put the departure in. So what runway are we using? I think Simbrief said 19, so it'll be the Octa... one of these. I don't know which one. Simbrief, tell me. Save me looking at a chart, please. Yeah, Octet 1 Charlie. I think. Yeah, that looks about right. Let me just go on ahead and... Uh... Yeah, that looks fine. You can see the little preview of it down there on the bottom left. Because normally in real life you'd be able to look at the screen and then adjust the knob without having to look directly at it, so that's why they added that, which is, which is nice, nice feature. Yeah, that looks all fine to me. Very good. Okay. Back to map mode. This is really detailed. It is pretty fucking detailed, yep. I'll give it that. Oh, we have Le Devices, of course. <laughs> I do love my Le Devices. And Le Flaps. It, it's it's leading edge. That's what the LE is for. But I always I, I I have always read it as Le Devices or Le Flaps, um, and it just amuses me because I'm a child. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> I'll show you passenger seats. I kind of can because I've right. You, if anyone's wondering, Dave, how did you set these wing views up? Because you've got the um, you've got the plane yourself, and you've noticed that you can't get out of the cabin because if you like turn around here and you're just like door not open. <laughs> Fud. Thud. I can't get out, I can't get out. Right, okay, so this is what you're going to do. This is a bit ridiculous, but... If you ram your head... I don't recommend doing this in real life, by the way, but if you ram your head right down here through the windscreen, you can actually glitch out of the cockpit. Um, but, uh, you'd think, actually, you could just stick your head out through the open window, but that, no, that doesn't work. I've tried it. But then, you, once you've done this, you can, uh, <laughs> you can, you can get back in through the other side, like, like so. Um, and the, the the reason why you can't get in here normally is because they haven't finished it yet. So if it looks a bit garbage, that'll be why it isn't finished. Um, see, all the textures are all fucked up and stuff, so, you know, they're adding it in a later version. But should you wish to glitch your way in here, this is how you do it. Um, they, so there you go. And then what, all you do is you just stick your head through here. And you're like, hey, presso, there's a view, view, and you just save it with the numpad uh, key commands. So there you go, that's how I did these. Ta-da! <laughs> anyway, <laughs> don't, kids, don't put, try and stick your head through the windscreen in real life, it'll end badly. Um, <clears throat> right. So we've done that. The, the departure is programmed, I can now pretty much, pretty much just go to progress. Oh no, forget that. We'll go to the takeoff page, there we go, and then I can go to legs on here, so I got, um, sadly it doesn't summon a pair of legs, that would be brilliant, but no, what it actually does is show you your list of waypoints, um, and there you go, now I could if I was being really MLG about it, set the little speed buggy things here correctly, but screw that, I've got a speed tape on the, on the screen there, I'm going to use it, so... Right, we're going to need to set up the MCP now, which is this thing. I don't know what's MCP, main control pack, I don't know, whatever. It's just this thing. 
you, you see MCP written down on a piece of paper in the instructions or the manual or something, just, it's this. It's the glare shield button thing that controls the autopilot. So, first things first, we want to go... V2 is 135, so we want to set that to our V2 speed. Like that. See, IAS Mac, that's speed in knots. Heading, we want that runway heading. Don't know what runway heading is here. Shit, I haven't, I haven't looked at it. It'll be like 190 ish, because the runway is 19. So it'll be. Whoops, wrong dial. <laughs> 135, my bad. Um. It'll be 190 ish. It's not. You don't really have to worry too much about it, in my experience. And then initial altitude. I we don't really have one, do we? Let me have a look. No, we don't have one. So I'm just going to put that to the transition altitude, which is 7500. Here. If the bloody click and drag manipulate will let me. Thank you. Then we can turn on the flight directors, which uh, which is the pink cross that appears on here that shows you where you need to fly. Uh, it's not showing up right now, but it will later. And then we can arm the auto throttle as well. Okay, so that's done. We're all good. We're ready to um, get, get... We're ready to rock and roll, pretty much. And by rock and roll, I mean read the checklist, because I'm a nerd. Oh, but I, mo mostly just because I don't want to fuck anything up. So I got my British Airways checklist here. I'm going to use it. You can... If you click there, it gets that little checklist thing here. But it's not very complete. Um, I believe there's been one floating around somewhere made by our very own Dr. Nerd Rage and Mr. P3 Ron. They, they managed to get their hands on a Norwegian Airlines... Um, checklist and they've, they've replaced this one with that. I'm using my British Airways one because I've got it and I can. Um, so we're not going to be using that. We're going to be using this. So, battery on. Well, you know, it, it's a given because if the battery was off, none of this would be on. But hey, battery's on. Ground power is on. IRS mode selectors are nav. Your damper's on. Yep. Instrument transfer switches. I can't find the fucking instrument transfer switches. I don't mind saying, so we'll just we'll assume they're okay. Um, on the NG, they're around sort of here-ish somewhere, like towards the bottom or whatever. But I can't find them on this at all. So um, yeah. Um, galley power is on. Emergency exit lights are armed. Window heat is on. Air conditioning and pressurization is uh, set. Is it? Or is it? Is it not? No, it's not. It's not. Lies! This is why we have a checklist, of course. To avoid cock-ups like that. See, because if, if, if I hadn't caught that, we would have all suffocated and died. So there you go. Be glad. Um, hypoxia is fun, kids. No, no, it's not. It's not fun at all. I don't know what I'm talking about. Ignore me. I'm an idiot. Uh, hypoxia is extremely not fun. That's why it's hypoxia. Anyway, okay, galley power is on, window heat on, air conditioning, yep, done, instruments checked, Q&H, altimeter, oh yeah, I did forget that. Whoops! It's 1019 is the local air pressure, so we want to set that there, so that that's accurate. Uh, order brake, RTO, for rejected takeoff. Uh, speed brake is down. You are, aren't you, Mr. Speed Brake? Yeah, you are down. Good. Parking brake is set. Red light's on, so. Uh, start levers are set to cut off. Stab trim cutout switches are those things there, and they're normal. Um, rudder and aileron trim is free and zero. And the, the CDUs are all set and, you know got all their data shoved into them. Uh, okay, so there you go. That's, there's that, and then there's the departure briefing complete. Blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, we're going to go on the runway, and then we're going to take off, and then we're going to follow the pink line. And that's pretty much the departure brief, folks. So, hip hip hooray. We don't have any tri ATC, I don't believe, so um, I should probably tune to Unicom, huh? The old advisory frequency, because apparently there's someone here, or about to land, actually. That's a, that, that's a good idea. Um, 122.8. Come on. 
There we go. So where's this fella? Apparently there's someone landing. Oh yeah, there he is, look! Shit. It's an Airbus with no skin, because I haven't got any model matching CSLs installed for Escort Box yet, but there you go, it's an Airbus, that's all we know. Um, hello Mr. Airbus. Who is he? What's he doing? Where is he from? Where is he going? Let's find out. Who the magic of that spy? He is. South African Airlines 307. He's in an A319. And he's coming from Johannesburg. Very good. Good for you, mate. I hope you had a nice flight. Um, Alright, so there you go. Fuel is... Uh, well, let's see. Crossfleet... Crossfleet... Cr Crossfleet, really. The crossfeed, even, is closed. The FMC is loaded. The fuel quantity down there is fine. We got a little bit of... Oh, we got a ditty bit of fuel in the centre. Look at that. 50 kilograms. Huh. Um... Uh, thrust is set in there. Speeds are set. Stab trim is set. And that's that. But now we're under the push and start stuff. So, let's start the APU. Wait for the light to come on there. I'll let that start to fire up. We'll put on the, um, the anti collision light. You can hear it powering up now. Very good. That's a little auxiliary jet engine in the back of the plane. It doesn't help the aeroplane fly, but it does provide us with electrical power while the engines are off, so it's, it, there's a little exhaust for it. It's adorable, and it makes a, this whining, hissing sound. A bit like a kettle that's boiling. Let's let the passengers board. Hey, well, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we don't have any doors that work on this plane, so, uh, yeah, we, uh, we, uh, they're all already here. They're stuck inside with us. Right, and then we transfer power to the APU. We can tell the ground air supply and the ground power unit to both kindly sod off and let us take care of ourselves. The passenger signs are on. The hydraulics, which has been spelt wrong here, it's hydraulics apparently, um, <laughs> are now pressurized and set. Doors and windows. Oh, but I want to leave them open so we can hear the engine start. You know what, we'll close you and we'll be a rebel and leave this one open. Um, <laughs> beacons on. Transponder is a uh, well, we're scoring 2,000 and on standby, so there you go. And uh, Phoenix, get ready, guys. There's going to be a bit of a horrid beep in a second, I think. So uh, brace yourselves, cover your ears. There it is. Okay. I might have been rip headphone users, or it might not have been too bad at all. So okay. I don't know if it will behave itself with this plane at all. To be honest with you, this is a bit of an experiment, but we'll see what happens. Um, Okay, Pegasus, uh, well, Phoenix in this case, started the check that's a bit old. Um, air is um, set, I think. Yeah, you're, you're open, you're, you, yeah, APU bleeds on, etc, etc. Oh, hang on a minute, no, air is not set. Air, repeat, sir, air is not set. It is not okay, sir, it is not okay. Um, packs need to go off prior to engine start. And then we push back and we do our thing, so... Ground services. Where the fuck are we going here? I don't even know where runway 19 is. Luckily, this is X plane, and I can just zoom on up here and cheat. That's 16, that's 19. Okay, so we want to go to the right, please. Nose right. Okay, so that's done. We've got the tug guy. Release the brakes. And he should start pushing us backwards. Please, thank you. He is. Okay, good stuff. Is there a historical flight you'd like to recreate? I've always wanted to have a go at the Dambusters flight, um, but it, it's it, it, it kind of sounds a bit too much like hard work, if I'm honest. All right, so we're pushing back, and now we get to start the engine. So we'll start number two first, as is per usual. Yeah, 
N2 starts to go up, N2 rotation, N1 rotation. Oh, you can hear it so much better now with all the packs and shit off. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. We put in the fuel. And you can hear it roar to life. You know, well, wheeze to life, I suppose, really. Jesus Christ, this pushback is spot on. Look at it. I didn't expect that. You saw flap and th sort of said, thought it said fap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Le faps. Anyway. Right. We have a starter cut out up here. We do. So we can start number one. Same procedure again. Into rotation. M1 rotation. Twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Yup. Stick our head out the side a bit. Yeah, there we go. Hey ho, engine's going. Why are we moving to the? You know what? Brakes on. Got to wait to push back. Tug. You're getting things wrong. You're getting everything confused. Parking brakes on. Uh, is it possible to crash in the sim? It's possible to sort of fly into the ground, have it go thunk, freeze, and then reload the plane at an airport. It doesn't really crash. Things don't explode. It's not nearly as fun as you'd imagine it. So, that's why we don't crash planes on this uh, channel, unless we're flying Cliffs of Dover or something, in which case we... or Kerbal Space Program, which place, in which case crashing is the rule. But uh, not in this. Okay, so we can turn on the air conditioning again. Start hissing to life, I imagine. Turn off the APU bleed and the APU itself. Turn on the engine generators. Why am I not getting a really obnoxiously loud hissing noise? Why are my packs not doing what they're why are they not why are my packs not packing? We can put our static heaters on. Fuel pumps on. Shit, should have done that before we started the engines, but okay, apparently you can start the engines without the fuel pumps on. <laughs> Get in. Um, interesting. It's done an Aerosoft Airbus on us. Uh, right. Yeah, why have we got, not got any package? Preferences. Oh no, we do have package. Apparently it's just way louder when you're on the ground without the engines on. Curious. Well, there you go, turn that up a bit. Not that loud, but that'll do. It's nice to be reassured they're actually working, you know. Can you close the window, please? Go away. There we go. Put that to flight instead of ground. Okay. Taxi light on. And the turn off thingies. You little buggers go to continuous. And uh, flaps go to five degrees. Uh, okay, after start, the electrical generators are on. Pedo heats are on, anti ice is required, air conditioning is set. Start levers are idle, you ground crew finish. clearance, fuck the ground crew. We do what we want. APU is required, flaps is required. And there you go, that's good. Flight controls wiggle, wiggle. They're doing their thing. As you can see, flight controls are working. That looks really cool, actually. See the 
the spoilerons or whatever they're called come up like that. Yeah, anyway, it all seems to be good. Uh, what about the? Yep. Okay. Rudders are working too. So let's go. Let's double check about spy. Make sure there aren't any people we need to be talking to right now. Nope. Uh, someone else here as well. There's the guy who just landed. There's also Scandinavian 290. Where's he and what's his business and where's he going? Oh yeah, that's probably him there. Unless that's the guy who just came in. I don't see any other planes though. Unless the guy's already taxiing, huh? Who fucking knows? Oh no, maybe that's him there. No, that looks like a static plane. Yeah, I don't know where the other guy is. Unless he's all the way over there. No, no whatever. It's a mystery. All I know is we're taxiing this way. Testing the 1.02 already. Yeah. I, well, I mean, it, uh, they, they released the update while I was doing my pre-flight, so I just did the hotfix downloady thing in, in the thing, and we didn't even have to restart the sim. It was kind of pretty awesome, actually, if I'm honest. I do like that system. It's, it's bloody clever, the way you can just download the update from within the plane. I mean, come on. Points for smarts there. I mean, very clever indeed. I'm wondering if I should, uh, once I've cleaned up some of the rough edges, post this delivery on uh, the X Pilot forums because I bet people would want it. Maybe I'll just post it up on BA Virtual. Okay. Crossing runway 16, and then we'll go on to. Uh, one nine, and we can also turn on our strobes. We can do the squawking of the altitudes. We can put our big lights on. I mean, it didn't take a lot of effort, Mungo. It was just you know, I had made some made changes to the default BA livery, and I changed some of the colours. To look a bit better. Added the Comair logo, changed the registration. Bob's your uncle. Why have we still got a master caution? Oh, because the we've already run out of our fifty kilos of fuel in the centre. <laughs> Alright then. So before takeoff check this engine start switch is continuous, flight controls checked, transponder TARA, vital data. I mean that shit down there is set. Think. I don't know what vital data actually is. I've seen it on more than one checklist though. Um, flaps. Five green light. The flaps are extended, boys and girls. The flaps are extended. Um, entering the runway, exterior lights are as required. Auto throttle is armed. Weather radar is on now. That's the wrong button. We want that one. So we get some what? weather radar. There we go. Weather radar things are happening, although I think we're picking up the ground right now. We'll just tilt that up a, a, a tad. Alright, looks like we're ready to go. Now this time, hopefully, I'll press the correct Mom button. Because I, I got my toga buttons mixed up. <laughs> Alright, LNAV and VNAV won't work under 400 feet in this particular plane, so we won't bother arming those. That's 50% in one. Everything looks hunky dory. It's 60% even. And. Toga. Oh my god, it actually works! It's amazing when you press the correct button how things actually work as they're supposed to. As opposed to pressing the wrong button. And. Rotate. Get in. Alright, positive right, gear up. The 
this thing flies so awesomely. Like it's it's not even funny. It's really good. X-plane flight model on the way. Are oh, you? You little bastard, X-plane. You nearly had me there. Full on cack my pants when you froze like that. Jesus Christ. All right. You can tell now. Monkeys. No, to fly I told you. I that. told you it doesn't fucking work unless you enter a goddamn. You know, what do you call it? Alright, we'll just go level change. Um, it, uh, the VNAV doesn't work unless you put an arrival route in. It's bizarre. It's just fucking bizarre. And I was hoping they would have fixed that for the, net, for the, the current update, but they didn't. So, hey ho. Get the flaps up before we hit the red tape there. Go away, barber pole. Go away. We just pitch to keep the speed under control for now. All those flaps re retract. There we go. Flaps are in transit. Come on. Yeah, flaps pretty much up now. Right, we're good. Okay. I'm now going to put the autopilot on. And just make sure everything's okay. Uh, you can go off, off, off. Get the retractables in. Get all of you off. And here we go. Ah, oh, damn it, we missed the view of uh, Cape Town on the way out, never mind. If we come back, we'll maybe see it then. <gasps> this plane looks so good. The flyby sounds are the best, though. I don't know if you can hear it properly on the stream. The audio might be a bit too low, but... Settings, now where is it? Uh, views, views, views. Still spot. actually sounds like a jet plane it's incredible I mean you'd think that's the you know the norm for um, aeroplanes in flight sim but no actually most of them sound really weird in the flyby view but this one actually sounds awesome anyway right after take off check this en engine bleeds are on packs are auto engine start switches are as required off in our case. Flaps are up, no lights. Landing gear is up and off. And then when cleared to a flight level, like say now for instance, let's go up to flight level 195 because we can. Oh dear. We can set the altimeters to standard. Like so. There we go. I'm going to tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a YouTuber called Dave, and he did stories for a living on YouTube. And he, one, one day, a person came into his chat and said, Dave, can you tell us a story? And he turned to that person and he said, go to the goddamn YouTube channel, for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to be able to see, say, everyone involved lived happily ever after, but that's probably not the case. Oh yeah, after take off check, this is complete. That's it, till the descent, and I might not even bother to do the descent checklist, because I'm lazy! Taking your 777 down to Luanda. Deny me. I don't even know where Luanda is. I'd like to be able to say I did, but I really don't. 
Um, it sounds like it's probably a long trip though. Luanda sounds very exotic. You flying with other Dave? I noticed you were streaming. I, I, I did tune in for a few minutes back there before I had to get this um, underway. Oh yeah, explain. Stop freezing. Thank you. It's in Africa land. I could probably find you on Vats by now, I think about it. I'm not quite proud of this livery, actually. I have to be honest. I didn't. It, it didn't take much effort. Like I said, it was done in about 15 minutes, but still. I made a thing, guys. I made a thing, and it looks quite nice. Yeah, the 3D sound in this really is good because you don't hear the from the cockpit, but you do hear it if you go down, go and sit down here next to the engine in the passenger cabin. That's ah, 10 out of 10. It's pretty cool. Fair play. The sound. I mean, I can't. I can't argue. The sounds on this goddamn plane are fantastic. The Exeg guys did a, did, did a just phenomenal job. Best sounding um, airliner add-on to date, in my honest opinion. It just sounds brilliant. So, well, you know, especially now that I can alter the pack's noise. Oh, I like how you've got little scratches and stuff on the windscreen, too. Get in. Oh, hello. Those are those mountains I was talking about, by the way, down there. Alright, we need to... Up to our cruise altitude now, 290. We'll climb at 290 knots. That should be fairly straightforward. I think that's what you climb at in a 732 anyway, so I can't imagine this is too different. Again, no V now because I didn't put an arrival in and I'm stubbornly <laughs> refusing to put an arrival in because you shouldn't have to until you're actually planning your arrival, god damn it. Um. Nice view. Well, I don't think that's how limericks work. You got the first bit good, but uh, I can't. I got. I, got I, I can't lie to you guys. Swirly cam is the best cam. Whether it's this plane or the seven six seven, I did. I, I, Give me some swirly cam. Oh, and there's peeps talking on the uh, on the what you call it on the unicoms. That's Scandinavian 293 taxiing up to runway 19. Apparently we missed him still. I don't know where he was. I couldn't see him. He might have been sort of submerged in the ground or something because he was in, the, in a different sim or a different terrain data or something. Alright, well, boring bit now, pretty much. More or less. 
progress. I suppose I could put in an arrival so I actually get my bloody... Um, use cost index zero until we get to the client boards and girls. I mean, until we get to the cruise, sorry. Um, but uh, I suppose I could probably... See, the thing is, friend... Port Elizabeth doesn't actually have any stars. Standard terminal arrival routes. And I'm wondering if that is going to bugger the plane, to be honest with you. It's got approaches, but it doesn't have any actual arrival routes. So, we shall see, IXDG. Can you do it? Can you complete this route without failing? You've got to test the weird routes you really do with these planes. You can't just do you know, fucking Amsterdam to Heathrow repeatedly and say, oh yeah, it's fine, it can do it, it's, it's good, no bugs, no no bugs here, sir. It doesn't work like that. You've got to do it. You've, you've got to actually test out the weird stuff. We'll probably just fly a visual approach, really, because it's, it's quite kind of fun to do that. In fact, we probably will fly a visual approach because I believe the localizer, according to the scenery readme, is a bit broken with this, with print the, the Port Elizabeth scenery, so... um yeah. There's a way to fix it, but it involves going into files and things that I'm too lazy to muck about with, so... We shall have... Uh, right, let me get the charts for Port Elizabeth. Oh, maybe the RNAV would work. I don't know which runway we want first, though, that's the thing. Um, what's the weather like in Port Elizabeth? Wind is 280 with 14 knots, so we'll probably want runway 26. Go on then, we'll see if it's there. RNAV 26, get in. I could do the, just take the runway and add myself a little extended center line through using a bunch of commands and stuff, but I've forgotten those commands, so... Whoops. Um, transition? Bugger. I'm not sure which transition we want. <laughs> Let me have a look at a map. Uh, looks like we're going to want the bottom one. Um, I think. Unrad. Except there isn't an unrad. Oh dear. Um. Um. I think they've changed the names of some of these waypoints. We'll go with Uviga and see what it gives us. And now, as if by magic, by the way, we should now be able to... No, okay, no, no VNAV for us. Maybe there's a disco on the legs page somewhere. Oh, there is, yeah. That'll be it. Again, you should be able to have VNAV with, you know, a, a disco, I think. There we go, now we've got VNAV. Run back our speed like you wouldn't believe right now. Holy crap. Why you do this? Yeah, it's almost idling the throttles. What are you doing? Okay, now it's going back up again. Strange plane. Are you trying to kill us, throttle levers, huh? Are you trying to kill us? Probably. Alright, like I said, we'll probably fly visual anyway, so... It hardly matters. Switch off these lights. Up here at this height. Oh, and uh, now we're in the cruise. I can give our cost index a bit of a boost. Excellent, eh?
Oh, mate, mate, I tell you, I tell you, it's like it's like a game of bingo. I've said it before like a thousand times, and this is probably part of the game of bingo. But I, I, it's 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 like Godwin's law, isn't it? You know, like the longer a Sorcerer Dave stream continues, the you know the quicker that the probability that someone will mention Stormcloaks versus Empire approaches one. It's you know, you could set your watch to it, you really could. South Africa's looking a bit brown. Oh dear. That could be misinterpreted in all sorts of bad ways now if now I think about what I, what I just said. Oh <laughs> shit. Go on, dig that hole. Uh, what I mean is it looks a bit deserty. Let's let's not role play in chat, because uh, you know there are actual sort of reasonable, um, sane adults that come to this stream every now and again looking for information about the plane I'm flying and stuff like that. So you know, I'd like I'd, I'd prefer it if you didn't scare them off. If I'm being honest. My God, it's like I'm not even here. You just carry on arguing about Stormcloaks versus Imperials like I haven't said anything. You, uh, you, uh, I don't even know what to say anymore. You guys know you can use this chat like even when I'm not here, right? Like you can come here at any hour of the day and just argue about Stormcloaks versus Imperials. I don't have to actually be here for that. Geo guess that's not a bad idea actually. How long have we got? Top of the sense over there. I mean, this isn't a very long trip, so. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, look at all these buttons that probably don't do anything. Uh. Well, it doesn't show our distance or time till top of descent. That's a shame. Never mind. Well, apparently, according to this, we're going to get to Oxet, which is more or less where our top of descent is. At. Well, I, I don't know. It doesn't say when, actually. Oh, well. It's 112 miles away, though. This 1.0.2. It is indeed, yeah. I updated um, just before we took off. Or just before we started the pre flight, anyway. In fact, I was halfway through the pre flight and then the update came, so. Friendly person in chat posted the uh, the hot link, hotfix uh, code, and I just pasted it in, and here we are. So. It's fixed some stuff. It hasn't fixed the things I wanted it to fix, though, so. I could be more enthused, I have to admit. I like how the, the gauges aren't exactly identical on both sides, by the way. It's pretty cool. Like, the numbers are slightly different, depending on the engine. What's my favourite Monty Python sketch? Uh, Gumby Brain Surgeon. All day, every day. It's so fucking funny. Well, at least I think so, anyway. It's, it's an acquired taste, I will admit, but... Can you make the, uh... The oaks disappear? I don't think you can. It doesn't bother me, though, but hey. Some people don't like having the yolks there, I don't know why. Weather radar 
battery stuff, are we? Let me change the tilt on this. Tilt it down a bit. See if anything comes up. Oh yeah, there we go, there's a little bit. So you can see the weather below us. There we go, yeah. Favourite aeroplane? I don't have a favourite aeroplane. I have lots of favourite aeroplanes, but I don't have a single favourite. Aeroplanes like cakes. Why choose one when you can have them all? Favorite Python? I don't know. Maybe uh, John Cleese is the obvious choice, but um, I, I don't know. Maybe Terry, Terry Gillingham. Honestly, I think he's probably the most underrated Python. Python um, can't talk today, apparently, as usual. I don't remember con comparing Elder Scrolls to Cake. If I did so, it was under duress. And therefore inadmissible in a court of law, so there you go. Oh, we're going fire! No, we're not. Just kidding. <laughs> I hope, I hope someone comes up with a smart co-pilot plug-in for this thing, because flying this, uh, you know, with, a, with a, another, blo another bloke doing the co-pilot stuff would be a hell of a lot of fun. Doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo. I've never done an r nav approach in this before, so it'll be interesting if we try and stick to it as opposed to just flying it visually. Do I care for carrot cake? I do, quite a bit actually. I'm, I'm a big fan of carrot cake. A very underrated cake, actually, as a matter of fact. Freeze! Oh, okay, we're good. I call this the GoPro on the wing cam. Some Burke left his GoPro strapped to the wing for reasons best known to himself. Now it's causing lots of aerodynamic drag and everyone's very cross about it on the whole.
No, I won't crash into another plane. For two reasons. One, there aren't any actually within like a thousand miles of me right now. Well, no, there's probably like one or two within a thousand miles of me, but... And also because I've got TCAS for that. At least... Oh no, hang on a minute. No, I don't have TCAS. Because they didn't model it yet on this plane. Rip. Okay. <laughs> uh, forget what I said. Will I ever fly the space shuttle? I probably should at some point. Since there is one in X plane. I've never done it before. I don't even know how you'd fly it, but... It, it, well, the thing about the space shuttle is it's not really flying. It's more like falling with style. To quote a certain film. But it really is. It's just a brick with some stubby little wings attached that falls through the atmosphere like a meteor. Do I have any time frame for when Skyrim or Fallout New Vegas ends? Well, Chapter 2 of Fallout New Vegas ends pretty soon, within the next couple of weeks. Pro probably, actually. And Skyrim will end at the... well, uh, yeah, let's see. Chapter 7 will be the end of it, yeah. That'll be the last chapter. So, and we're currently, I'd say, maybe two-thirds of the way, Chapter 6. Somewhere between, well, we'll call it three fifths of the way through. Now, of course, the beauty of a Boeing, and I will give them credit for this, over Airbus, is that. If you're feeling exceptionally lazy, what you can do is this. If I look up what the final approach fixed altitude is, it's 3000. So, what I can do is reset this MCP altitude knob here to 3000. Uh, like, oh, for God's sake, just. You. like so when we reach our top of descent point marked by that green TD there on the map the aeroplane will start descending all by itself so I can still sit looking at the wing view like a lazy bugger can't do that in an Airbus sadly <laughs> for all the things that are automated on the Airbus they didn't automate that which to me is actually kind of ironic I suppose There is other descent prep we could do, I suppose, like setting our minimums up. Which, for us, are 760. So, about there. Mm, oh, you know what? I've got a descent checklist up for this, so I don't have to remember it. Okay, recall. Checked. Packs. Auto. Do. Oh, that's the take Monkeys okay. than that. I have to take off checklist, you dunce. Uh, okay, air conditioning pressurization is set. Speeds not set. Okay, so yeah, we need to go init the ref. Approach ref. Flaps 30. Okay, so there you go. There's the speed set up. And da -da 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 -da. we can go descent. And now that's interesting. Speed restriction, we want 240 past 10,000. Hopefully we'll accept that without crashing. Uh oh, I think we may have just crashed into rip. Okay, no, we're good, apparently. I don't know, it didn't It didn't put anything in. It's, whatever. Um, forecast, transition level is, I don't know. It's 5,500. Why the extra 500? Is that a South African thing? Maybe it is. The Q and H down there is one zero one four. Well, let's see. What is uh, the ISA dev? Is what? I don't know. I don't know. It's not here on the thing. I can't find it. Up. Um. Yep. I have no idea. One zero one four on the altimeter, though. Oh yeah, I forgot. This is a thing, isn't it? Yeah, the the plane just sort of. 
Alright. Just <laughs> someone let me enter that apparently. Interesting, okay. Um What did we put in to start with for the ice dev? It was like plus six or something, wasn't it? Average ice was plus six, so we go six and then one zero one four. Maybe it'll actually behave itself. No, okay, fuck you too, IXEG. What, what can I say? Um, wins. So just give us slightly more accurate top of descent data. This will, but let's see. Wins are as follows. So up here at uh, well, hmm, two nine zero. Well, two nine zero. Oh, that should be that really should be flight level two nine zero, just to specify. Invalid entry. Really? Are you kidding? There we go. It's that, and then, and then one five thousand. We'll take that. Okay, so. Two nine zero. It's two five eight at eighty nine. Whoa, eighty nine. Thank you. Two hundred. It's two seven zero at six three. And at one five zero, it's zero four seven at twelve. No, it's not. That's the temperature. It's zero four seven at what? Oh, no, it's. Fucking two six eight at zero four seven. Okay, I learn how to read, Dave. There we go. All right, that's fine then. Flip an egg. Okay. Do I do conventions or meet and greets? <laughs> no. <laughs> I live in the UK, there, there's fuck all conventions and stuff here anyway. Um, I have a tiny audience anyway compared to the average YouTuber who does that sort of thing, so there's really no point. I might be going to Cosford for the Flight Sim show in October this year. That'll be the first time I've ever done anything like that though. I mean, I'd, I'd quite like to go just anyway, but officially going as Sorcerer Dave to, a, to an event like that. That's something that's really bizarre to me. Uh, but yeah. I, I, I have to admit I'm slightly jealous of all the people who went to PAX because pretty much everybody in my Twitter feed was at fucking PAX while PAX was on, so... Including people I never would have thought would have gone to PAX. Um, so... But, you know, I don't have, like, I'm not sitting on a small fortune in cash that allows me to just jet off to Boston whenever I feel like it, so. Now, if you want to pay for me to go to an event, I don't know, we're talking, okay. That includes the price of the plane ticket. Then we can do business, my friend, but, uh, otherwise... Do I follow Fudge Mumpet? Mm, no. I don't follow a lot of people on YouTube. And most of the people I do follow, you've never heard of, because I'm a hipster like that. Honestly, I tend to follow people on YouTube who do stuff. Um, well, they're either people who I followed before I started doing YouTube videos myself, or they're people who do YouTube videos that are quite different from mine. I don't tend to follow people who do the same stuff as me because I really don't really I don't have any desire to watch that. You know, it's like you know, you 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 you. Mean, you're you're like you're maybe you're a garbage man for a living, and then you come home and you you don't want to empty your bin, do you? You've been doing that all day at work, so.
combining theater mode and dark mode is awesome. Yeah, it's it's my favorite combo. That's what I usually use when I'm watching a Twitch stream. Well, you joke, Krill, but I mean, I do effectively watch myself all the time because I have to sit through and edit my videos after I've recorded them, so I do effectively watch myself all the time. Kisses. Mm, kisses. Headbutt. Poof. You guys, Weijin kiss. Seven three seven. If you keep up with that weird down now, bol bollocks, I will give you a fucking headbutt. Can we get airplane the movie cam? I'm not sure how to really kind of make that happen. If I'm honest, I could do it in e with Easy Doc if I was in prepared, but I don't think I can do it in X plane. It's sort of weird. That's about the closest we're going to get, as awkward as that is. It's from the poster for Airplane. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but they basically just did a... They, it, the poster was a parody of Jaws, but with an air, airplane. <laughs> like that. Where am I off to? I'm going to Port Elizabeth in, oh my days, what is it drawn over there? Um, Port Elizabeth in South Africa. We, j we left Cape Town, we're on our way to Port Elizabeth. And then after that, I might go up to King Shaka, if I can be bothered. Is, uh, oh, I forgot to check Phoenix. Is it behaving itself? Yeah, it is. It's in the cruise. Nice. Get in. drawn spaghetti. Yep. Big old plate of pink spaghetti up there for us. Yum, yum, yum. Some of that's probably going to be the missed approach procedure, but yeah. It's weird. Let's go into plan mode and take a closer look, shall we? Oh, dearie me. Oh, no, no, that's pretty straightforward. Yeah, basically, we just we go all the way down there, make a right turn onto um, onto the... Uh, the extended scent line, we go in, we try and land if possible at runway 26 there. Then this is the missed approach when if you, you know, if we have to go around, this is what we do. Which it's pretty much sorted. Yeah, GG. 10 out of 10 IXCG. I, I'm not, I, I'm not going to fault you on your, on your LNAV drawings. That's something you do incredibly well. If you if you require drawings of pink spaghetti, this is the premium aircraft for which I would recommend such an endeavor. Absolutely, this this air this airplane, it, the IXTG, it draws only the very finest in pink spaghetti. No, this is a different. Um, this is a different seven three seven Zabo. Um, this is actually the new IXEG one for X plane. The other one is the PMDG seven three seven for uh, pre prepared. Uh, different sim, different plane. Oh, there's more ships down there. They are fucking now. Oh, look at that. So why am I not getting ships? Like up in Europe, but I am getting ships down in South Africa. 
That's weird. Must be a pl plug-in complex somewhere, I guess. Maybe I'll have to have another look at my scenery load order. Because i got a plug-in that's supposed to add sea traffic, like these guys here, but I've, it's only after coming down here to South Africa that I've actually seen any. Hmm. So that's pretty cool. It actually sounds like an aeroplane. I know. Tell me about it, JB. <laughs> I'll give you the um, I'll give you the flyby view again. This is the best bit. This is what I paid seventy five dollars for. <laughs> Bing! That's so good. Again, again, again. In the words of the Teletubbies. <laughs> too good, too fucking good. Anyway, Oh, I see you there, Mr. Nerd Rage. Fucking kicking open the saloon doors. Sauntering on up to the bar. How you doing? For the record, I am still pissed that the VNAV doesn't work unless you put an arrival in. Um, but other than that, the, now they've released the, the 1.2 update, it's more or less fixed. 90% of everything. I'm sure I'll find a way to break it once we get back on the ground again and I try to reset these buggers, but uh, oh, here we go, descent time. You can teach monkeys, monkeys to fly better than that. that. It also helps that I made myself a livery for it, so, you know. You can teach monkeys to fly better than that. Tee hee. Couldn't resist. Motorbike out quite late tonight. Yeah. I even did the registration and everything. It's on the gear doors, too. And of course we have swirly cam, so that's all good. How are we going to make an SDFC livery? I don't know. Honestly, I'd <laughs> that sounds too much like hard work to be honest with you. I'd rather just pay Cranky to make one for me, <laughs> if I'm being honest. <laughs> I, I can't switch liveries right now in mid-flight because it'll fuck up Phoenix, but I'd show you, I also got a, um, a BA Landor livery for this thing, and it is the dog's bollocks, it looks so good. I didn't make that one, but it's brilliant nevertheless. I 
I also edited the default BA livery a little bit, but um, yeah. All right, Django, cheers, dude. Well, you know what, mate? If you didn't, maybe if you didn't hang around in my uh, in my chat twenty four hours a day, you'd be less tired, huh? 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 <laughs> Just kidding, dude. Have a good one. Uh, yeah. So we are officially descending on the path and everything. Oh, it's all good. I don't even have to put any speed brakes out. The speed brakes are still backwards, by the way. Don't believe a word they tell you on the change log. They are still backwards, and I, I double checked, and my buttons aren't backwards. Uh, my my button assignments aren't backwards. It's 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 still backwards. Or potentially it was the right way around before, and now it isn't. Drag required. Nonsense. Oh wait, yeah, no, actually, because we need to slow down. All right. I give you drag, which will make us wobble and shake. Eventually, I'll probably turn off the head shake, but for now, I I enjoy it. <laughs> Do I do use EN boost for Skyrim? Nope. Don't need it. Mind you, I have I use an ENB for Skyrim anyway, and I'm pretty sure that has the boost feature built into it as it is, so in a sense, yeah, I do use it, I guess. Map lights and air conditioning nozzles. And the um, yellow thing on the checklist. I tell you what, X-Plane, this is like default vanilla X-Plane scenery out the window right now, and it still does a better job than prepared with even with the vector and stuff installed. I mean, I told you, I showed you the mountains earlier, which look a million times better, but the coastlines, even that, looks goddamn good. It's a shame about the ground textures, that's all. They could be better. They could. But I suppose that's what photo scenery is for. Oh, hello. Oh, here's the test. Does the, does, does the second radio work in this thing? So, 119.3. Does, does COM2 work? Of course it does. Right, well, we've got an RNAV approach coming up. Never done one in the IXCG before. Don't know if it will do it, can do it. Can do it properly. I know this I know that this scenery is a little bit funky, but that I think that's only as far as the localizer goes. I think an RNAV approach should in theory be okay. Although I've noticed in in the sim both in prepared and X-Plane, our nerve approaches to runways almost always seem to be a little bit skew -if. I don't really know why. Aurelin, thanks very much for following, subscribing, all that good stuff. Cheers, dude. Hope you're enjoying the show. I am having, I'm having a grand old time. Yeah, we don't have an official term for that, I'm afraid. No, no, I will not consider any more Skyrim. It's not, n uh, never. You could not pay me enough, trust me. Fucking hell. Should we, should we do another flyby? It won't sound as good now though, because we're in the descent, but oh well. Still does sound pretty good actually. Alright. 
you know what, I am going to put the retractables out just because it's a little bit of extra drag. Uh, They may have modelled that. They may not have. I don't know. Drag required. Yeah, I'm giving. I'm giving it all she's got, Captain. We're actually below the descent profile right now. I suppose that's better than being above it. Unless they've done that backwards too. Ixcg. Hmm. Let's put that back in. Get rid of the camera shake for a precious few minutes. Oh, there it is, now we're back up of it again. Fuck you now. More drag required. Wow. I feel like we probably shouldn't have to uh, <laughs> ride the speed brakes all the way down the hill like this. Um, but, okay. Kind of, well, I feel like speed brakes are a sort of thing you really shouldn't need to deploy normally, but well, no, what do I know? One million quid per video. Well, oh yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd, I'd be stupid not to uh, not to take that, I suppose, but. Uh, I was speaking figuratively. Unless I actually said you literally couldn't pay me enough, which I think I might have done, which is stupid, and I shouldn't have said that. I apologise. Yeah, we... Oh, my God, yeah. We're, we're, we're not far away from the, the right-hand turn on the final. That's... Hmm. I think we'll probably take this a bit further out, if I'm honest. Luckily, because I'm a genius, that was already synced up. Don't freeze. Thank you. Which means I can actually put you away. Oops. Oh dear. Uh oh, now what are you doing? Get back on the... yeah, thank you. You bloody aeroplane. There's a thermometer in here somewhere. I wonder what the... the, the tat is. Keske Sailor Tat. Oh, there it is. 10 degrees. Oh yeah, we're fine. No need for anti-icing, we can just enjoy the view. Oh, hey, look, rain effects on the windscreen. That, that, they're pretty cool, huh? A little bit pixelated, but pretty cool. you are taking far too long to get down to the required altitude. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull that out. And I'm going to make you do a double knuckle if we're using U-boat terms. And hopefully that will get us down to the required altitude. Yeah, it should do. And the required speed. check VATS by and make sure there's no one here that I need to be giving advisory messages to. No, we are alone. Excellent. You know what? 
we can bloody hell. We can turn the air conditioning. Finally up a little bit more. There we go, that's a bit better. Don't want it overpoweringly loud, but I'd like to also be able to hear it. Why did you... Oh, I pressed the wrong button. That's why it didn't work. <laughs> Alright. I can re-engage LNAV. Stow you. Get to see flaps out. Uh, that's clever. See, the pack sound gets louder the more spooled up the engines are. That's why it seemed really quiet. Clever. I guess that's why it's so loud on the ground when you use the ground air conditioning, because the ground air conditioning is just like, boom, maximum power. There's the airport. Now then, uh, the question is, are you gonna, you know, do the thing? Oh, we need to lower this, don't we? I almost forgot, my bad. Set it down to minimum, which is about there. I forgot how to RNAV, guys. I'm sorry. Well, I forgot how to RNAV in a Boeing, anyway. We'll put it that way. Yeah, the sound design on this this thing is it's fantastic, Nerd Rage, isn't it? It's just so, it's it's so damn good. It's just fucking light years ahead of any of the other uh, uh, you know other airliners, sim sims out there. Right, let's arm the speed brake. Why are you speeding up, Flynn? What are you doing? Whoa! Yeah, what the fuck are you doing? Slow down! Motherfucker. How do I speed it, Naveen? It won't let me. You little... I've got it from here, plane. You're good. Technical problems. Oh yeah, you can you can enable failures and stuff like that. I just choose not to on a plane which I'm not 100% certain is uh, working as intended all the time anyway. But yeah, no failures are totally a thing. I've been meaning, I need to do that with the NGX at some point now actually as well, now they've done the uh, the update which adds all the emergency procedures to it. Uh, you know, the, with the FS2 crew update even. I'm struggling with talking, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. Hey plane, speed up. She doesn't want to speed up. What's going on? You know what? 
we'll get rid of you. Yeah, my arm half. This is a, it really is all kinds of funky. It's taken us down to the goddamn beach. Right, I can see the pappies now, so should be okay. I guess that glitch with the localizer applies to the RNAV approaches too, I suppose, or unless that's just typical sim RNAV stuff not working as it should. Probably a combination of the two, I'd imagine, but yeah. This scenery has some issues with its localizers and stuff, which, unless you fix them manually in the game file somehow. Landing. Oh, as if my decision height wasn't in properly. How do you set? I oh, never mind. We'll worry about that another day. How do you set a barrow decision height in this? I guess you don't. I guess you just look at the altimeter and do it yourself, the old-fashioned way. Yeah. You can teach monkeys to fly better than that. Oh, like a glove. Some network link last well. Oh well. <laughs> uh, how do I? Yeah, there we go. Okay, the speed breaks away. Doesn't matter now. Sergeant Desmond, thank you awfully, old chap, as the, as the man says. What made you want to be a pilot? Um, probably repeated trips to Duxford Imperial you War Museum as a child. Monkeys to fly fly better than that. Followed by repeated viewings of the Battle of Britain, which is the film clip that's from, by the way. Um, followed by more repeated trips. Followed by, in 1998, my parents buying me a copy of uh, Altitude Alert. You what, mate? Um, my parents buying me a copy of Microsoft Combat Flight Simulator for Windows. You can teach monkeys to fly, fly better than that. Um, kind of from that point on, I was pretty much hooked on the whole aeroplanes thing. But ultimately, it was only in the last couple of years that I actually kind of learned more about how proper real aviation actually works and how, you know, it kind of de demystified a lot of the stuff I've learned um, regarding like how easy or difficult it is actually to get a pilot's license. And I've since learned a lot and it kind of just occurred to me one day, uh, you know what dude, you could, uh, you could totally get a pilot's license, it's not that hard. I mean, it's not easy, but it's not that hard either. Is my transponder... No, okay, no, it still said 2000. I'm seeing things. Why is with the altitude alert? I don't know, whatever. It's been reset now. Doesn't matter. Okie doke. After landing shut this pedo heat off, apparently already. Right now. Off it goes. Anti-ice as required. Flight ground switch goes to ground. That's you there. Engine start switches are off. Exterior lines as required. Flight directors off. Oops. Both of you. 
where the radar off as well. Um, auto brake off. Oh, okay. I wondered if it was like the triple seven where you don't turn it off because otherwise it locks up the brakes. Um, but apparently you do turn it off on here. Speed brake down. Yep, yep, yep. Start the APU. Take one of these gates, I think. Flaps are up, weather radar's off, transponder is set, APU start and on buses when available. I choose you, stand nine. Senor Catstrader, how you doing man? I thought you were streaming tonight. Or have you not started yet? Oh, and it's probably still pretty early over there, huh? Anti-ice. You what, mate? Oh, it'd be the, the pedo heat as it's whining about. Right, fair enough. And... That's a bingo. All the way off, please. Thank you. You're live in 90 minutes. Jolly good. Um, it might be more or less enough time for me to get my ass over to King Shaka before we call it a night. So maybe I should uh, get on that, huh? I swear these are slowing down. All right, welcome to Port Elizabeth, everybody. <laughs> and now it reacquires Vatsim. Yeah, sure. Thanks, thanks for that, Phoenix. Um, stop the flight. There we go. Submit. GG. That's another one in the bag. There we go, we can, uh, ooh, where's the menu? There you are, ground services. Give me that, give me that. And, uh, ground power on. Turn you on and then turn you off. Okay, good stuff. Right, you're all off. The window heats can stay on, so let me fucking stay on, really. Uh, door damper off. You guys can go off. You can all stand up now. And, uh, oh, that's sort of about it, really. Very good. Very, very good indeed. Nice one. Alright then, well there you go. Welcome to Port Elizabeth. Thank you for flying with Comair Limited. We hope to see you again in the future. Um, right, so I need to go take a piss. So in the meantime, I will leave you gazing at my glorious livery that I made myself completely. And... Uh, Uh, if I can just get it to... There we go. And uh, I'll be back momentarily. Probably with a drink, actually, now I think about it. I think I've got some cider in the fridge. I'll go grab that. So, yeah, that was the first flight. We're now going to go up to King Shaka International, which is a slightly shorter trip. Um, mind you, this one wasn't very long anyway. So, um, yeah, if you want to join me for that, very good. If, if not, then uh, have a good one. I'll see you next time. And hopefully we'll we'll get the, the plane down in time and when we can all go watch Mr. Cat Strader, who also streams X Plane. And um he's pretty awesome, so yeah. Right. Be right back everybody.
once a daisy. It's enough to make you weep. All right, let's do this. Okay. Whew, let's get rid of that away thingy. There we go. Okay. Are you going to go watch Jeff play Viscera Cleanup Detail? Fair enough. I, I watched I watched that video earlier. I There's something weirdly compelling about those Viscera Cleanup Detail videos. I, 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 I do enjoy them. Anyway, so. Okay, I've, I've had... Everybody telling me, including some of the chaps responsible for making this aircraft, I think, in the chat, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to uh, reapply the hotfix. There it is. Thank you for the code there. Um, to reapply the hotfix, I will do th exactly that momentarily. However, first I want to see if I can get this to... Uh, I mean, third time's the charm and everything, but I want to see if I can get this to uh, re-initialize, or whatever you call it without having to reload the plane, or reload the, um, the panel state, or whatever. So if I put in, in theory, if I do that, see now my root legs are empty, however, okay, and we want to go to F-A-L-E, however, still got some of the missed approach stuff in there, but somebody told me, now what I tried to do last time was just cack-handedly delete those from there, and that caused a gizmo crash. So what someone told me I should do instead is enter a new departure. So if we put in two six, apparently there are no SIDs here, but uh, then go back to root. Yep, that did it. That cleared it. Nice. Or I could have just put in a runway and I think that would have done it. Nice one. Alright, so that's how you reset it if you want to go on and do another sector, apparently. Um, Alright, so let's let's uh, let's go ahead and Right, Windows, Hotfix. Let's reapply you. Update. Brave man trying this, yeah. Well, now the last two times I did it, I did it wrong and I caused a gizmo crash. But I think that seems to be the correct way. Alright, hotfix installed. Reboot. Okay. Hey, 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 Uni. How you doing? I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry, but I, I don't actually speak French, so um, en English would be preferred. <laughs> Um, right. That's my drink of choice this evening. It's a can of Taurus dry cider. It's not the best cider I've ever had, but it's also not the worst, so. Alright, okay, let's let's do this then. Nice. Ah, okie doke. Right. Um, ground services. 
I'll have both of you, please. Oh, and, uh, right, yeah, I need to actually make the flight plan, huh? <laughs> that would be a good idea. Okay, Simbrief. Hit me with your best shot. This time we're going to be Comair uh, something. Let's see. Back. Back. We just did... What was that flight? That was... BA6321 Alpha, and we want BA6321 Bravo. Yeah, there we go. It's the second sector for the flight. Okay. Um, we'll do the Saturday flight. Okie dokie. You can take book. Monkeys We're to fly better than that. We're going to King Shaka. We're going to Durban, folks. Alright. So that's done. I just got to go back to Simri from where you are. Call sign is comma three twenty one again as before. Departing, fate going to fail. No, really, that's the it's F A L E. That's the uh, <laughs> that's the I K O. South Africa has the best I K O codes. Um, <sighs> right. Out of curiosity, now that we've reapplied that fix. Now that still seems to be backwards. Maybe my buttons are backwards. I need to check that. I'll, I'll have to load up the 767 at some point you and compare it. Um, Monkeys to fly better than that. Right. So. Airframe is a Bo Boeing 733. I'm going to have to get used to uh, putting that into Simbrief, huh? I normally jump straight to B seven three eight or A three twenty. Alright, yeah, we want Lido, we want no no E tops, no step climbs. They will not be necessary. It's given me a route. Um which looks pretty straightforward. Mm, departing runway two six, arriving runway two four, yeah, looks looks good to me. We'll generate the OFP. We'll uh, get this ready to go. You can teach monkeys to fly better than that. Okay, so we want two uh, seven point five tons again, more or less. Yeah, there we go. We'll do realistic speed. Oh, uh, well, you know what, I would randomize the load sheet, but again, it'll, 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 well, whatever, go on, might as well, I'll take a different load this time. Ramp is connected, okay, we're refueling, um, CG's all good, trim 2.9 units, shall I just set that now, before I forget, oh, I don't think I can, oh, I, no, I can, I just have to do it manually, because... My, my button on my joystick's actually set for that and not this, so fair enough. That's 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 like that's totally legit as well. That's exactly how it is, how it is in the real plane. So if you've got everything switched off. You're gonna manually crank the wheel, huh? Uh, all right, so 2.9, about there, ish. Okay. All right, battery, round power. <laughs> flows? Who needs organised flows? Uh, right, I'll do it properly. This strip's done, this strip is uh, kind of done. The strip, arm the exit lights, turn on the seatbelt signs. Window heaters, those are done. And then you. Set to auto, I'll open that. Open that. We're up to 290 again on this one. Just the same as last time. Lovely jubbly. Oh, and uh, position lights. There we go. Okay. Oh. 
Okay, okay, okay. Let me get my skates on here. I love that the... It's a little thing, but I love that the menus in that actually work now. Um, okay, still got the wrong air act data, but it, <coughs> it... Trust me, it won't matter. Um, pause in it. Right, we are at... F-A-P-E... Our IRS is... I've not even started the line in the bloody things, whoops. Um, I probably could have just put us to turnaround panel state, but never mind. What's the time? 10.18, yeah, we're, we're good on time. Keep to the schedule, guys. Don't be an on-time machine. Okay. That's done. Origin is... Good old FAPE. Our destination is... Fail. <laughs> right, give it a minute. There we go. I should uh, point out that a lot of the freezing and stuff is not the fault of this aircraft. It's just my install has a plug in somewhere it doesn't like very much. We're Comma 321 again. Runway 26. Plus. Our route. Doth go like follows. We are going direct to it kit. And then the upper Quebec 30. Uh, uh, uh. Now here's a here's a fun little test. If I now we're going to Imlet after that, but in theory if I type in just upper Quebec twelve, it should come up with Imlet Imlid even there by itself. So if we do upper Quebec 12. Invalid entry. Oh. Really? Oh, maybe it's a peculiarity of the 733's FMC. I know it's slightly different to the ones on the, um, the more modern planes, so... By the way, Imlid. Or maybe it's, maybe, the, maybe it's my air rack as well. There's, there's always that, so... So, upper Quebec 12. Done, sir. Activate. Execute. Perf. Are we refueled yet? Looks like we are. We got the diddy little 50 kilos in the, in the middle again. Um, okay, gross weight, blah 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 blah. I love how it's so easy to find this out. You just open this. Gross weight 62.87 tons. Nine really, if you're rounding up. Uh, okay. Okay, so refuel weight's going done. Reserves, I'm just going to put one because I can't be bothered to check. I know I'm lazy, I know. Leave me alone. Transition altitude is 5,500. Whoa, not 55,000, that would be hilarious. Um, cruise out is 290. Okay, now. The funky wind info. Let's see if we've got that for us here. We do indeed. Average wind is two eight one zero six two. And the ISA deviation is plus nine. There we go. Execute. N one limit is fine. Take off. Doop doop doop. Very good. We can switch you on over to legs, and uh, I just so we can actually get the um, unless they fixed it with the with the, with the extra tweaks they've just done. Well, we'll we'll, we'll try it. Okay, we'll try it. Um, I'm not sure if they have though. Uh, otherwise, what I would do is I would put in the arrival as well, just to get the VNAV to behave itself. But we'll we'll try it. We'll try not doing it and see if it works. Um, right. You. Uh, you one twenty two one eight. I need to file my flight plan with the VAT sim, I almost forgot. There we go. Okay, flight plan is filed. I think we're still connected to VAT sim, so there we we are. Uh okay.
Eshin, hello, welcome aboard, how are you doing? What textures do I use for the dirt in Fallout New Vegas? Uh, shit, I can't remember. Um, I think they might be the Ojo Bueno ones, I think. And, I, and for the rocks, I use the um, the NMC ones for the rocks. I think that's how it works. So, so I've got the red, orangey rocks, but the um, the sort of greyish dirt, if that makes any sense. You can sort of override and muck about with the files in the mod manager, so that's how I did it. You can tell it which ones you want to use from which packs. I can't remember how, to be honest with you, because it was so long ago, but yeah, you can do that. Right. Five minutes still aligned, okay. Well, we can press some noisy buttons, as usual. Don't know how that works exactly, to be honest with you. I love that button. It's Christmas! Hooray! Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Oh, they're all good. Do the GPWS test again, I suppose. Oh, there's no control on it within a billion miles, Ridge. No, don't, don't, no need to. Brace for the ear rape. It's all good. Only on. I'm only on that sim because it, I'm a lazy bugger and it's easier to pre-file a flight plan with a sim brief than it is on IVAO. I need to get this thing on on the pilot edge. I'll suit up with one of the Southwest liveries I've got for it and uh, get to work. Now though, I need to exit and restart Phoenix. There it is. Oh, what was the alternate? FDMS according to this. My plan, like so. Okay, away with you. <laughs> Pilot edge. <laughs> uni loves Pilot Edge. I'm not sure Pilot Edge loves Uni, but. Uh... <laughs> Shit my pants, dinosaurs. Need I say more? <laughs> it still makes me laugh, it really does. <sighs> Shit my pants, dinosaurs. Explain ten. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Cali power's on. Alright, we're, we're all good here, pretty much. Just waiting for the IRSs to align and then we'll, we'll get to it. I suppose I can do a checklisty thing or something while we wait. Let's see. <clears throat> I got my BA checklist, which I need to um, I need to save as a PNG thing and put in so I've got it up there but uh, on the dashboard. But for now, I've just got a PDF, like a pleb. Battery on. Ground power on, IRS mode selectors nav, your damper on, instrument transfer switch is normal, galley power is on. I almost forgot it. All important Garrett galley power, how else are we going to get our cups of coffee? Emergency exit lights are on, window heat is uh, on. Yep. Uh, air conditioning and pressurization is set. Yep. Instruments checked. Uh, hang on a minute. I just 
Wait a minute, yeah, no, hang on, they're not chained at all. Whoa. VR 149. Have we got enough runway for that? My god. Should we go tear flaps 10 on this takeoff? Whoops. Invalid entry. What? Really? I can't do a flaps 10 takeoff? What about flaps 15? Oh, I can do that apparently. Whatever, we'll do that then. Oh, excuse me. Such a barbarian, I'm sorry. Um, Alright, yeah, okay, we'll do that then. We're pretty yeah, goddamn heavy, I'm afraid, so... Okay, V2148. Head de he ooh, heading 26... Uh, that should be fine, actually, I think. You can teach monkeys to fly better than that. Uh, that's sort of... Yeah, that'll do. Wait, no, hang on. Ah, close enough. Altitude! Or just put it in transition level. Altitude, not level. <laughs> Get it right. And, uh, okay, so that's done now. Instruments are checked. Q&H, AA, set. Auto brake, RTO. Parking brake on. Speed brake is down. Yep, just double checking. Stab trim cutout switches are normal. So, rudder and aileron. Rudder and aileron trim is free and uh, zero. And uh, the FMC slash CDU are set. So there you go. Let's pretend we got our departure briefing. It, it is it is as follows: we take off, we make a right turn, and then we go that way towards uh, Durban. That's that's your departure brief. Enjoy. Uh, fuel cross feed is closed. Checked set. Blah 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 blah. Um, yep, 3.7 in both tanks plus the extra 50 kilos. God bless it in the middle. Um, Thrust is set, speeds is set. I I could set the speed bugs, but I'm lazy and I've got a speed tape. Um, stab trim is set because we did that before we switched anything on, actually. Uh, and there you go. You can teach monkeys to fly, fly better than that. that. Okay. Two, five, and fifteen. Okay. Why not ten then? What's wrong with ten? What did ten ever do to you? Hmm. Poor old Flaps Ten. Never gets any love, does he? Flaps Ten, because the thing is, thing is, when you when you're when you're on your approach, you go in at Flaps Five, and then you jump straight to fifteen once you're established on the localizer, so Flaps 10 never gets any love ever, really, poor bastard, he's, he's completely pointless, isn't he? I, I, yeah. Flaps 10 is people too, guys. Come on. Hashtag Flaps 10 lives matter. Right. So... We're more or less ready to go now. So all that's done. We'll do we'll do the push start checklist. Um let's see, electrical monkeys uh, to fly better than that. As required, hydraulics. Let's go ahead and pressurize them. Doors and windows. Close and open because I'm a naughty boy and I want to listen to the engine starting. Uh Beacon. Oh, you know what? Start the flipping APU, that's not that would not be a bad start. Um beacon on. Uh, transponder. Stand by. And Phoenix. Started. 
Uh, and there's the beep. Sorry about that. The ribbon still says, oh, it does, doesn't it? Whoopsie daisy. Let me just fix that. Thank you for the, uh, thank you for the note there. No one ever reads it anyway, except for you, apparently, so. <laughs> On there, 321, so that's a good one. <laughs> I might just stand by the flight deck door and creep through the peephole myself. <laughs> Very good. Alright. APUs on Z buses. Oops, wrong, wrong menu. Go away. Go away. Stop for making my sim freeze. Away with you. Thank you. Ground services can kindly bugger off. And yeah, okay, we're, uh, go away. We're ready to go. So. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting you could do this. Hehe. <laughs> Push back. Nose uh, right. Yeah, nose right. Release the brakes. Brakes are released. Why are we... Okay, it wanted to turn this slightly there. I don't know why. Uh, okay, fine. You can teach monkeys to fly better than that. You can teach monkeys to push back better than that. I'll tell you that much. All right. Let's start this beast up. Oh. Shit. <laughs> Let's turn the packs off first, huh? There we go, 10, 11, 12, blah, 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 blah. Start a cut out, start number one. And T rotation. And one rotation. What the Oh, you're doing this again, aren't you? Yeah, just put the brakes on. Oh, cool. Look at that. We're blowing dust back. Nice. There's X-Plane. Exhaust heat effects. That's still good. Well, either we're not blowing dust back or the engines are on fire, but I think we're good. Oh, I did it again. I forgot the fuel pumps. <laughs> One of these days I'll remember to do that. Packs back on. APU bleed off. Done. Right. Let's get moving. Anti-ice. Oh, yeah. Hooray for the ICAS. 
remembering things so that I don't have to. I have to start checklist. Electrical generators on, pedo heat on, anti-ice as required, air conditioning and pressurization packs, auto and flight. Thank you. Start levers idle detent. Ground crew clearance. Well, I hope we received it because we're already moving. Um, APU as required. Flaps. 15. Engine start switches continuous. The flight controls I consider that to be checked. God they do look cool, don't they, those surfaces when they move around. They just have the right level of sort of smoothness. Okay, transponder. Don't need to worry about that just yet. Vital data is set. Flaps. 15 green light. As I said before, folks, the flaps are extended. Oh, I think the runway's supposed to be... Uh, yeah, the, that's what it is. It's not dust or anything like that. We're not on fire. It's, uh... I, the X-Plane seems to think that the yeah, that it's raining, or that the um, the tarmac is wet, and that's why you're seeing it on the wheels as well. I've just realised, oh, that'll be what it is. Okay, fair enough. Okay. Strobe. Big boy lights. And, uh... Altitude. That's an interesting turn we're going to be pulling there, but I'm sure we'd get vectors out of here IRL, so no worries. Right, press the big button labelled clock. So that's not actually what we want. We want this to go to run instead. There we are. Okay! Oops, forgot about you guys. Flight directors are on, auto throttles armed. Let's go. Looks good. And once again, the correct toga button, not the wrong one. One rotate quickly before we run out of runway. Thank you. I feel flaps 15 was the correct call there. Eh? You ask me. Gear up. LNAV? BNAV? No, didn't think so. Alright, well, whatever.
Where are we flying to? Durban, South Africa. King Shaka International Airport, no less. Alright. Command A. And, uh, right, you guys go off. So do you fellas. You can go on. You can go off. And so can you. After takeoff checklist, engine bleeds on, packs auto, engine start switches as required. Uh, flaps up, no lights. Landing gear up and off. And we are going to go ahead and clear ourselves to a flight level. Like so. Let's set our altimeter to standard. Actually, I have to take off check this complete. Hello, explain clouds. Ooh, you know what? I've never bothered to, um... the wipers in this thing yet. Oh, they look well cool. Hee <laughs> Flap! Flap away! Take us to altitude. Trusty windscreen wipers. You can teach monkeys, monkeys to, to fly, fly better than that. that. Fly by time, I think. <laughs> another one, another one, another one. Yeah, I know the the wipers do look comically fast, but trust me, they actually are. They do go that fast on the real thing. It's um, it's quite cool. You can teach monkeys to fly better than that. Uh, right, you know what, I need to sort this out so we can actually have VNAV. Oh, uh, okay, okay, arrival. What did it know? What's in brief telling me? It's the Duns one Bravo. Any second now, there we go. And I don't know what the runway was, I'm afraid. Well, apparently we can only have 2 4 with this one, so we'll take the ILS. Yankee 2 4. Transition TGV. Oh mate, are you really gonna make me look at look at look at look at charts? No, we'll just take the transition and see what happens. <laughs> it's pro pilot, man. <laughs> Don't do this in real life, kids. Oh dear. Okay, there we go. Flip you over to progress. And VNAV uh, what? Okay, no. There's a there'll be a discontinuity somewhere. There you are. You little bastard. Alright. Now we get VNAV. Which means we'll climb at the correct speed and also cruise at the correct speed. <sighs> it's 
possible to show your perf page. Yeah, yeah. Um, index perf. There you go. Tossed index zero in the climb as per BA sops, and then we bump it up to 20 once we get to top of climb. In fact, I'll leave it on that page right now, actually. Not even close to drunk. You'd, you'd know if I was, trust me. That was my first can of the evening, so. I slur my words when I'm sober, so, you know. Nothing new there. How much do you think my simulator experience has prepared helped me with help me for with them? Uh, immensely, absolutely fucking immensely, like uh, you, you, immeasurably so, um, big time. Um, you can never quite prepare for the actual physical feeling of being in an aircraft at the controls, because it will never you will never have your controls at home feeling like the yoke of a real Cessna, for example. But uh, and you will, you can you can't really prepare yourself for the for the G forces and the and the actual turbulence and um, updrafts and downdrafts and all the rest of it. But um, in terms of the actual theory, in terms of understanding what's going on in the radio, even if I'm not the one doing the communication, um, in terms of understanding airspace, how that works, all this, all the other good stuff. Yeah, my simulator experience is just ten out of ten. Absolutely. If you, if I honestly, I would say if you want to be a pilot. Get yourself a copy of X Plane and or, and and or prepared, and and get some do some flying. Get on Pilot Edge if you can, do their pilot training program, all that kind of stuff. Just just fucking do it. It will um, it will contribute immeasurably towards your education. plane look any more gorgeous. I will be doing that flight to Cairo in the 767 by the way. Um, I just didn't really didn't feel up to it tonight so that's why we're here in this instead. I forgot to show you some of the other paints I had. Damn it. I can't do it in, in flight with Phoenix running, otherwise uh, it'll break. But um, I'll do it when we land. Listen, listen to him. Listen to Mermaz. Listen to M3. He knows what he's talking about. You, you should absolutely strongly consider uh, getting a pilot edge subscription if you're serious about um, real world flying. I can't recommend it enough. I mean, obviously there are differences between. Say, I live in the UK. Um, there are definitely differences between flying in the UK and flying in the US, but um, not that not not as big differences as you would probably expect and also uh, just generally training your radio skills and stuff um, that, 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 that applies to wherever in the world you're flying and just the just the basic concepts surrounding airspace and that sort of thing that was a big deal for me when I started learning the VFR stuff 
um, because it is a little different in the UK, um, but it's very minor differences usually, just stuff like, and you know, like, like in the US, uh, class Charlie airspace you can fly into as long as you're in contact with um, ATC and, and Delta, I think, as well. Yeah, as long as you're in contact with ATC. In the UK, you must ask permission, as if it were Bravo. And most of the rest of the world, too, actually, now I think about it. I think that's a very US-only sort of a thing. But it, it's minor differences, really. Minor. Minor stuff. And the just little bits of, I don't know, little tiny phraseology differences, like instead of saying closed traffic or whatever, or the pattern it's referred to in the UK as the circuit. Um, and, yeah. That sort of thing uh, is really inconsequential at the end of the day, in the grand scheme of things. Well, I mean, unless you <laughs> unless you fly straight into some Charlie airspace in the UK without asking first, that's not maybe that's not quite so inconsequential. But I think you know what I mean. <laughs> Fleet list for Bav. You couldn't find it on the web. Uh, okay, right. Well, I won't. It's not. Yeah. Uh, let, me, let me find you the full list. You have to dig around for it a bit, I'm afraid. Uh. No, 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 no. Where is it? Where's the, where's the, where's the BA virtual SOPS manual? Flight operations. Ah, here we go. Bab operations manual. Right. It's in here somewhere. Okay, here we go. The BAV fleet is as follows. I'll put it up on the screen for you as well. Airbus A319, A320, A321 and A380. Boeing 737, 747, 757, 767 and 777 and 787. Embraer 170 and 190. Dornier 328 and the Jetstream 31-32. The classic fleet includes Concorde, the Boeing 707-320, 747-200, the Viscount 800, the Vickers VC-10, the Vickers Vanguard, the Back Trident, the Back 111, the Herald Hebrides Comet 4B, and the Fokker 100. And if you want to get really in-depth, this is everything here, using the BA codes depending on where they're from, like mid-hull configuration, form of BMI airframe, etc, etc. So you've got A318, A319, A320, A321, A380, Boeing 733, Boeing 734, 752, 744, 763, 772, 77W, 787, that's both the 800 and 900 I believe they use, 7878 and 7879, uh, E170, E179, uh, D328, J328, JS31, JS32, SB20, Saab 2000, and then the classic fleet, A748, that's the Hawker Siddeley HS 748, Boeing 707, back 111, Concorde, uh, DC10, really? Interesting, I don't know if that's actually in the schedule, interesting, I should have a look for that, um, oh no it's not anymore, that was an old, um, World Cargo thing, they, they don't run that anymore, this is slightly out of date. Comet 4B, De Havilland Twin Otter, uh, Hebrides, Herald, uh, Tristar, 111, uh, 1011, sorry. Trident, Vanguard, Vickers VC-10, and the Viscount 800, so there you go, that's the full fleet, if you're curious.
That will include the Airbus A350 once BA actually gets theirs in real life. And it's worth mentioning that some of them are either classic only. The, the 737-200 is included in there as well, by the way. They added that relatively recently, so the 732 is in there as a classic plane as well. But, um, some of them are operated only by sort of BA subsidiaries like Comair, for example. So the, the Boeing 738, 733 and 734, they're all Comair in South Africa. Exclusively, so you you, you won't you won't get a faint. Uh, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. You won't get to fly that on European schedules. To South Africa only, Jobby. Same with the Jetstream 31 and 32. That is um, operated by Sun Air of Scandinavia, I think, under the BA flag. Um, over in Denmark and uh, Germany, so. Uh, well, if you want to find that again, I don't know why it's, they've made it so awkward to find, but if you go to... Hell, I don't know if you can actually get to it if you're not a member, but on the BA Virtual website, you go, you go to the dispatch at the top, and you go to the drop-down, and the first one on there is Flight Operations, and it brings up the Flight Operations page, and at the left, under Manuals and Support, you'll have BAV Operations Manual, and that's got all the stuff in there, so it looks like this. Hold on. There you go. So you want Dispatch, Flight Operations brings you to this page and then you've got BAV operations manual right there. I recommend reading that before you join by the way because they'll, they'll put little um, they'll, there'll be a few things on the little entrance exam thingy that are referenced to in there so it's worth a read if you're considering joining. Did I get the patch? Yeah I got the 1.2 patch and then I re-downloaded it as, as, advi as advised. I didn't have any problems with the word the, the the original version I downloaded. To be fair, um, the noticeable difference so far, to be honest with you, is simply that I can go to menu now and I can click FMC and it works. Um, aside from that, I haven't noticed a change. My my big bugbear, which is the fact that you can't use VNAV unless you've programmed an arrival runway, um, doesn't work still. So. I keep using level change on all my departures at the minute. Um, which is a shame, but uh, oh well. I'm sure they'll fix it at some point. But yeah, so far it's pretty solid. I've. Uh, I think I got off on a bad foot with this plane, mostly because the law of averages kicked me in the teeth and gave me every bug there was for it in one sitting, including the my, my having to you know delete my entire preferences folder as well after in, after installing the first hotfix. But now it seems to be working fine, you know. Aside from that. Spoiler keys are fixed. Oh yeah, good point. Are they? Right, I still think they're backwards, but because look, I mean, I've set it up so that let's go settings, joystick and equipment buttons. Okay, so that's my retract key for the speed brakes. There, you see that bottom left, and this is my extend key. Extend one. You see, retract one, extend one, retract one, extend one, retract one, extend one, and so on, so on, so on. However. If I exit this and I hit the retract button, nothing happens. If I hit the extend button, sorry, the, if I hit the extend button, nothing happens. If I hit the retract button, it extends it. So I still think that's backwards. I don't think we can do descend now yet, which is, I don't know, that little that bothers me a little bit as well, but it's not the end of the world. I really would be able to, I'd like to be able to do descend now though. Because I like to start descending a bit 
before the actual calculated top of descent because that minimizes the amount of time I spend riding the speed brakes. How about the three and four keys? The one or what? Three does that, four attracts, three extends, four attracts. I don't know if that's supposed to, if that's correct or not, honestly. Actually, meanwhile, uh, init ref, index, perf, cost index, god damn it, 20. Now we're in the cruise. There we go. Descend using VS and go back into VNet once you catch the slope. Still a pain in the ass though, yeah, pretty much. Whoa. Okay. Well, that's certainly interesting. It's gone now. Holy crap, we're coming up to our B and E. Oh, because my flap somehow came down. That's probably why that is. We were at flap spawn. Because reasons. Uh, that's probably me messing around with the... Uh, yeah, it'll be me messing around with the speed brake, because I have, like, a hat switch. Left and right on the hat switch are for the spoilers, and up and down are for the flaps, and I think I accidentally extended the flaps. <laughs> Whoops. Better than that. that. Probably. Probably, probably, probably. Is that a cup of coffee down there? It is. With coffee in it. Huh. <laughs> Exeg. Branded coffee. Very good. There aren't any credit cards lying around down here, are there? No. That's just the, uh, just the X737 then. Nope. <laughs> I know, we have only the fluffiest of chairs here in, here at Boeing. You can teach monkeys, monkeys to, to fly, fly better than that. that. Although I'm more of an Airbus fan, I must admit, I think Airbus need to step up their game in the chair department. There is a distinct lack of sheepskin in Airbus flight decks, and I think that needs to be remedied. Zebra print chairs. Oh yeah, fuck, fuck yeah, man. Especially since we're in South Africa. Like, zebra print chairs, leopard print. A lot. Hell yeah. Alright. We'll be landing flaps 30. Although... I don't know why I bothered to set that just now, because, quite honestly, we're way above the landing to the gross weight right now, so there's really no point in me fucking assigning that uh, right now. But what I wanted was the ILS frequency, 109.7. Oh, that's the com, that's the com, com radio. What are you doing, man? <laughs> 109.7 and the course 240 degrees oh yeah you know you don't get a um, glide slope and localizer thingy on here anymore on the sides when you're out of range of the localizer anymore so that's nice 
it just removes the indicators altogether. So that's, that's good stuff. That's as of the latest hotfix. chart so I've done this before this route it's quite a fun one actually this one with the two sectors and our final oh hang on a minute wrong chart whoops okay final approach fix altitude is 3400 so let's just set that now I had it there for a second oh come on there you go 3,400 and our minimums are 510 I think So can I set that on this? But the thing thing is, this isn't this isn't Barrow, is it? I think this is radio altimeter, so whatever. I'll set five hundred and ten. Let's start estimated landing weight according to Simbrief. Do 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 do. I think it's five zero two nine zero. Wait, hang on a minute. It can't be fifty tons. Up. Oh, wait, no. Maybe it is. Oh my God! Oh no! No! Ah, bollocks! Well, shit. If I try and reboot that now, it's going to turn the entire plane off. Oh, how very fucking dare I try and put in a gross weight in the FMC. God damn it. Right, well, we'll, we'll just continue for now and hope nothing breaks. Nothing else breaks. We're now, f we're now flying a very, very fast, a very expensive Cessna, guys. This is why I should have flown the 767 today instead. Oh well. This is the plane's way of saying, you should not meddle in that which you do not understand, peon. I can remember what our VREF speed was last time, so I can at least move these bugs around. And our landing weight this time should be more or less the same as last time, so the route's almost exactly the same length, so.
Yep, yeah, yeah, you don't get you don't get gizmo crashes in the seven six seven, that's for sure. Oh, I'm gonna have another flyby view just to try and make me feel better. That helped a bit. <laughs> Fight fact, I should list that as a feature on the org store. <laughs> Cheeky. Is the map display actually moving? Um... It is, thank god, okay, that works then. My favourite dessert. Mm. That really good rhubarb crumble, probably. Well, how, how's everybody doing? I've really got nothing better to do at the minute. I just I'll just sit and talk to you guys. We've got a little while to go yet, so. PMDG is writing their code themselves with C and X plane. Uh huh, really? I'm sure that'll end well. But uh, fair enough, I guess. They've got their way of doing things, they've been doing it for many years. I suppose, who am I to argue? I'm am curious to see what uh, whether you know what's going to happen as we try and fly this thing in for the approach now with the, with Gizmo having crashed. I'm sure, it'll be a barrel of laughs. Everything's kind of set up though, so in theory we might be okay. Luckily, I programmed all the approach and stuff and all that kind of thing prior to, uh, you know to the gizmo crash so we might get lucky on this one <laughs> we'll just <laughs> we'll do it like a u-boat crew like when we need to descend we'll just get everybody in the plane to run to the nose Stabilizer trim is not working. Well, just use the passengers to trim the aircraft. <laughs> Need a bit of nose up. Everyone to the back of the aircraft, please. Nose down trim. Everyone run towards the uh, the cabin near the cockpit door.
Masterchef. You bloody view. I don't. Know, I don't know what to say. Re Masterchef is one of those programs I was always forced to sit down and watch with my parents on the telly during a weekday when there was nothing interesting on, like QI. It was pure bloody torture. kind of vow to myself that if I ever have kids I won't force them to watch TV with me because I tell you what I fucking hated that so much I don't know if any of you were the same but every every evening week on a weekday and weekend half the time as well you, you would just have okay it's family viewing time and you would sit down and you would you watch teach. whatever the fuck mum and dad wanted Monkeys you to watch to better than that. That. four of us as kids sat there squished onto one sofa Arms folded, very indignantly sitting there, yawning our way through whatever was on. Have an old Latvian babysitter who would force you to read really long books with small print. That's mean. Yeah, The Simpsons was alright. You you never really could go too wrong with The Simpsons, that's for sure. But that was kind of the highlight of the evening. That was the problem. Was once The Simpsons had finished, then you had to put up with whatever else was on. How long till we land? I don't know. The uh, progress page isn't going to tell me, I don't think. It's not going to give me an accurate reading anyway. Especially since Gizmo's crashed now, so it's anyone's guess. I don't think I can even open the page if I wanted to. According to this, we should get there at 11.20 Zulu in game time. So we should have been there... Now! <laughs> it lies, it lies. It's not to be trusted. Well, you know, it's like that with all these new planes, I suppose, that come out for X-Plane or, or whatever. You've just got to go through the long, laborious, painful process of learning which buttons you are not allowed to touch without the thing breaking. It's a shame, though, you know. I hoped for more with this uh, particular plane. I didn't want I didn't. I, I kind of hoped you wouldn't have to put up with that sort of thing. You know? That's a sort of jar design esque kind of a problem, you know. Oh, well, you better not press that button, or otherwise you'll break the whole damn plane. It'll just be, you'll be gone, you'll be done. You know, that's that's a very, that's kind of what I'd expect from like the jar A320, not the, not this thing. You know, so this plane's supposed to be sort of a bit of a different caliber of add-on, but um, you know, when you take away all the flashy graphics and sounds and all that lovely stuff. Um, You've still got an FMC that will completely self-destruct if you press the wrong button. And I'm sure they're, they're working hard on fixing it, and they, they really are. They've done two hot, hot fixes now in as many weeks, which is incredible. But, yeah. I won't lie and say I'm not disappointed. That's all I'm saying.
just the last flight of the evening. Yep, pretty much. I'm uh, after this. I'm done. I'm going to go watch uh, Mr. Cat Strato if he's not already started. He probably has already started actually. But um, I'll chuck in my host and we'll go over there and say hello. Once we're done here. Nickelodeon, oh, that's um, not not something I'm familiar with. I think you could get Nickelodeon in the UK if uh, if you had like um, you know Sky or something like that, but um, I didn't as a kid, so I just watched whatever the BBC let me watch. <laughs> Although a friend of mine had Sky, and I'd always end up going over there to watch Cartoon Network. So I do have some fond mem memories of that, but, uh, yeah. Hello again, Spider Cat. How you doing? I don't really remember much of what I watched on Cartoon Network, to be honest with you. I think it was mostly Johnny Bravo and I Am Weasel and Cow and Chicken and uh, what else? <laughs> There's another one, I'm sure. Of it. Ed, 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 Ed and Eddie, that was the one, yeah. I watched a bit of I Am Weasel the other day, actually. Just <laughs> what a fucking ridiculous program. <laughs> Same goes with Karen Chicken, really, now I think about it. Oh, and the Angry Beavers. Yeah, I remember that, too. That was quite good. Yeah, I, I kind of mostly watched that when I could go over and watch Cartoon Network. And when I was at home, I'd just watch... To be honest with you, I'd watch war films. <laughs> War films and Thunderbirds and Captain Scarlet and uh, and Stingray, all the Jerry Anderson stuff. Starship Troopers. You, your kids, I mean, your your parents even, let you watch Starship Troopers when you were seven and Enemy of the Gates. Fucking hell. My parents didn't let me watch Saving Private Ryan until I was about 14, I think. And to be honest with you, I'm kind of glad they didn't because I think the real impact of the film would have been completely lost on me if I'd watched it when I was like 10 years old or whatever.
Danger Mouse, oh yeah. And the old Tom and Jerry cartoons as well, I mean you've got to give them give them credit. And Looney Tunes. The classics, you know. Of course, the first scene um, Saving Private Ryan is forever kind of ruined for me because I had to study it for um, English literature when I was doing my GCSEs. So I rewatched and rewatched and rewatched and rewatched the entire Omaha Beach scene so many fucking times that it's it's now etched into my brain and um, I'm I am incapable of enjoying it anymore. English lit has a way of doing that with stuff. It takes books and sometimes occasionally films that you would otherwise absolutely love and makes you hate them. Like Charles Dickens for example, I probably would have enjoyed Charles Dickens a lot if I'd actually been allowed to read it of my own accord, but no, no, no. I had to do great fucking expectations for English Lit at A level and I never ever want to read that book ever again now. Of mice and men again, yeah. Fa that, that's a good. That's a book that is universally considered fantastic, and I think, really, objectively speaking, it is. But I never want to read it again because I had to do that at fucking school. So, your dad let you watch James Bond when you were seven. Oh yeah, I got to watch James Bond when I was young. Goldeneye, fuck yeah. I think it's the first James Bond movie I ever watched. Or was it? Might have been. I might have watched some of the Roger Moore ones prior to that. Now I think about it. Oh yeah, fucking hell, Shakespeare. Shakespeare, you know, brilliant, brilliant. Except when you have to do it at school. And it's the worst thing in the known universe. I, th I love how they made a big joke about that in... Um, I think it was the Blackadder movie they did. Uh, where he goes back in time and he just sort of... Goes off on one when he meets um, Shakespeare for... <laughs> for, uh, for torturing school kids for generations to come. Alright, we're descending, boys. It all depends on the play, because I tell you what, Shakespeare is also the exception to that rule, because at A-level I did um, Richard III, and I still love that play. Even in, even English literature, A-level, could not make me hate Richard III. That was such an awesome play, I love it. It helped that I got to watch the really awesome Ian McKellen version. But, uh, yeah... Alright, M3. Cheers, man. See ya. Have a good one. Oh. Is my radio going to work now that Gizmo's crashed? 122.4. Oh, thank god. Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. I, I've heard that is a really tough book, even if you're not doing it at school. I don't know myself. I've never, I've never had to read any Mark Twain, so. But uh, yeah.
the worst one, the absolute worst, was Pride and Prejudice. I had to do that for my first year of English Lit at A-level. Pride and fucking Prejudice, like the, the archetypal book that everybody loves to hate at school. And I got saddled with the fucking thing. Jesus Christ. Unsurprisingly, I had to resit the exam for that one two years running, so... Drag required. Oh yeah, you want to slow down, don't you? Alright, well, get ready for the shudders all the way down, folks. Oh yeah, Catcher in the Rye, that's another one that's a bit tough, apparently. What's so horrible about it? It's just so dull. It's really awful. It just, it's it is the archetypal dull Regency novel that everybody hates having to study. Oh, hello. I think that's our place. That's that's King Shaka down there, in fact. Nice. Um, I never even, I don't even know what the plot of the book actually is, because I never read it all the way through. Um, I tried a couple of times, but just fucking fell asleep. Um, and I ended up just sort of getting the kind of whatever it was the Cliff Notes equivalent was for it at the time, and just sort of used that to blag my way through the exam. So, yeah, to this day I still could not tell you what the actual plot of that book is because I never managed to suffer all the way through it myself. Why do we never do the Hobbit in English classes? I guess because there's not much to it really. It's just sort of a. It's really just a children's fantasy novel. There are better ones out there. I mean, Cash 22, for example, that'd be a great one to do at school. Or I, I would have liked to have done it at school anyway. All quiet on the Western Front. In fact, I think some of my some some people I knew on, at other schools doing the same course did do uh, all quiet on the Western Front instead of Pride and Prejudice. It's very fucking jealous, I have to say. And some sci-fi novels, for fuck's sake! Can we can we get some sci-fi novels in school, please? Because there's so many good ones. Money Jesus Christ! Than that. Not even just science fiction, just anything like that. Like, I could, if I'd done I Am Legend at school, oh, that would have been amazing. Because I fucking love that book. I Am Legend was brilliant. Or, or, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Come on, can you imagine doing that at school? It'd be brilliant. You'd get to watch the TV series and the film as well as bonuses. I'd turn a bit wide, but it's okay. So far, so good, to be honest with you, in spite of the gizmo crash, so fingers crossed. Devil. 
I don't even know. I didn't bother to check this in plan mode before I tried to fly the damn approach, actually, so I have no idea what's going on with this. <laughs> um, whatever's got programmed in here, it sure as shit doesn't look correct, but... Uh, oh well. I'll just go ahead and take some self vectoring on this one. Oh no, I kind of get it. It's sort of going around here, then we loop around over the field, come back around, down around. Yeah, alright, I kind of get it. Although I don't know what that's about. I guess that maybe is the missed approach. I'm gonna assume it's so. so blah, 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 I'm gonna assume so. Try and try. You know, you know what? Come on, brain. You know what? Just try and say one thing at a time. It it's it's really it's kind of revolutionary. It's the way to go. To say one thing at a time instead of trying to say two things at a time, and then that way people can understand what you're actually saying. All the clouds and textures default explain. The clouds, no, they're um, some free texture replacers you can get from the, f the .org forums. Uh, they're HD clouds version 2. I think they look fantastic. So a lot of people use Skymax. I've, I've certainly given Skymax a go, but I still think these are better and they run better on my system as well, so... Still going way too fast, what the devil. Matt Davis set up with how to make a good look look good for free. Um, kind of, I, I do have a lot of the stuff he does have in there, but mine's at, my setup's fairly different, to be honest with you. As far as I'm aware, I don't know what his current X-Plane setup is, to be honest with you. It, his sim definitely looks different to mine from the streams I've seen. So, I do have a list of plugins down below the stream itself. I have my own custom Real Terra Haze preset, for example, um, which includes a few cloud settings like uh, cloud puff size and that kind of thing, and cloud whiteness. You can teach monkeys to fly better than that. What's, what sound? It'll have to be a bit more specific. If you mean that, it's the electric, you know, it's the, it's the automatic trim, trimming the aircraft. Mm, yeah, we're gonna need more. Drag. Hey, do you, can you ever descend this plane with, without using the speed brakes? It's crazy.
That's a nice view. Holy crap, look at that, yeah. Not bad, not bad at all. Alright, we've got the localizer. We just need to fly on up this way. There you go, that's the field. Yeah, the pink spaghetti mess over here is something that, uh, yeah, it's a bit silly, but, um,. I, uh, I'm not able to fix it now, unfortunately, because the gizmos crashed, so. Alright, glide slopes armed. Oh, what the hell? Suddenly clouds. Okay. Oh yeah, you're right, you're right, Muffin Man. I need to put the IXEG in the add-ons list. <laughs> Good point. B-Ref speed's all wrong. Oh dear. Thanks, Gizmo. Alright, we've got the glide slope now, so put the gears down. <laughs> that trim go nuts. Okay. Have a bing bong cabin. There you go. You have been bing bonged. <sighs> okay, let's do this. Need to remember I'm back in X Plane as well, I can actually do replays, although I've heard this thing can be a bit funny with its replays. Doesn't that annoy me, the trim? Nah, not really. I'd sort of tune it out after a while. Alright, auto brakes armed. Speed brake armed. 
ignition's continuous, lights are on, flaps are down, 30 green light. Let's do this. Gear, for, gear down, 3 green as well. Don't, don't want to forget that. <laughs> Recall checked. Only thing I haven't set is the altimeter. What is it here? It's 1009. Oopsie daisy. That oh, one, I'm done. Alright. I'll have that. Thank you very much. And that. Say ALS doesn't seem to be bugging at this airport. A landing. Come on, down you go. Oh, nicely done. Oh dear. Steady there on the fucking... Yeah, we go. Back on the center line, please. <laughs> Gotta flip the plane over, Jesus Christ. Stowed, order brakes disarmed. Flaps up, please. Spoilers back in. Is there an exit up there we can use? Yeah, there is, good. No U turns for us. off on both of you. Start the APU. Flight director's off. The transponder and strobes I'll deal with once we pull off the runway. Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome to King Shaka International, the city of Durban, South Africa. We seem to have made it down in one piece in spite of Gizmo um, shitting the bed after me trying to change the uh, gross weight on the landing reference page. So it's all good. Go. 
toddle on up here. Put the APU generator on. <laughs> that air bridge is way too high up. Right, there we go, that'll do. Parking brake on. Engine's off. For you. Well, I'm sure Durban's around here somewhere. I don't see it right now, though. <laughs> the roads just seem to end in nothing. Uh, how peculiar. Weird. Oh, well, anyway. Because that's what you get if you don't use any OSM data or HD uh, mesh down here in the arse end of Africa. Fair enough. Alright, let's... Uh, Get the ground power supply unit thingy in there, and then we'll get the air supply, blah 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 blah, whatever you call it. Alright, your damper off. Off, 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 off. Off. Back to ground on you. Collision light off. Good stuff. So that's everything, really. Oh, yeah, except for you. Fuel pumps off. Okay, nice. Welcome to Durban, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, shame about the gizmo crash halfway through, although we seem to have made it here in one piece, nevertheless, so that's okay. My FMC save for the version. Boo. Oh, yeah, Gizmo's crashed, so I can't use that now. Uh, I can't tell you because uh, the ident page doesn't work because Gizmo crashed, so. <laughs> Damn. Well, that's that then. Um, yeah, let me just stop Phoenix, then we can go look at some replay. There we go. Submit the report. Job's done. Okay. Alright, let's see if this will work without crashing. Uh, actually, before we do that, I'll show you. So, this is the this is the com air livery I made. Basically, just by editing the, the default BA livery a little bit. Um, so, that's cool. It's got the new registration on it, com air logo on the front, etc., etc. But I also got a few new ones, uh, like this one. I love this one. Look at this. No! Oh. Gorgeous. I love the Land Art paint scheme. I truly do. I think it's fucking gorgeous. Mmm. So nice. So, so nice. And a couple of others. Let's see, what else did I grab? Uh, a couple of new Jet 2 ones. A KLM one. Uh, Qantas. Oh yeah, and a Southwest one as well. I think Cranky made this, actually. There it is. It's the old Southwest paint job. Which I quite like. And Thompson as well. There we go. And uh, United Airlines Battleship Grey, which looks really sweet too. There you go. <laughs> nice. So yeah, pretty cool. I'm, I'm amazed how quickly the liveries have come out for this thing. It's incredible. People seem to really like it for some reason. <laughs> Could be because it's really bloody good, but hey. Oh, and American Airlines as well. Yeah, look at that. That's another cranky job, I think. 
That is nice. Beautiful. Anyway. Let's see. Please don't crash, please don't crash, please don't crash. Uh, oh, oh, it's actually cycling back through the liveries. That's weird. How's that? <laughs> as if that's saved as part of the part of the replay. That's hilarious. I didn't know that. No, no, back. Press any key to continue. What? Uh oh. That's probably not good. Yeah, I'm just getting that endlessly cycling at me now. Yeah, I, I broke it. Never mind, no replay for us, apparently. <laughs> yeah, never mind. Thanks very much, everybody. Thank you. Uh, that was a bit of a glitchy stream, but it's to be expected, I think, with that aircraft at the minute. Ugh. Yeah, you missed the landing rage. Sorry. Yeah, the fat lady is officially sung now, guys. Uh, we, um, you know, I mean, we had a gizmo crash, but we got the plane down anyway, so it's okay. Uh, we muddled our way through the pink spaghetti left behind in its wake. Uh, I, what can I say? What can I say? It needs more bug fixes, and they are doing the bug fixes, so, like... You know, there's not that much to complain about, really. But like I said, I wish it was better on release. I really do. Instead of having the whole jar design thing of, uh, oh, you better not press that button, because if you do, uh, you press the button and now your plane's dead. GG. I don't, I just, I don't, know, I don't know what to say, I mean, all I wanted to do was change the gross landing weight in the fucking FMC so I could program my approach, but no, 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 we're going to get my crash for that. That's a shame. Anyway, we'll uh, be... Oh, hang on a minute. Oh. We'll be flying that thing next time. Look at it! Raw. Oh. Yeah, that's what we'll be flying next time. Probably either to Frankfurt or to Cairo, depending on how... You know, up to it I feel about doing a long route. If I can't be asked with a long haul route, I'll just fly to Frankfurt instead, because that's the next one on the agenda. Uh, but yeah. Because that thing, that actually works. It, it doesn't break. It's FMC, just randomly. It's, uh, it's bad. The 767 is really good. I, kind of underrated, if I'm being honest with you. I don't see a lot of people streaming it, to be to be fair. Even before the, all the IXEG hype, I, won't, I, I don't regularly see loads of people flying this 767, and I don't think that's very fair, if you ask me, because I think it's a bloody good aeroplane. So yeah, I guess it's just not one of the popular ones, you know what I mean? It's not an A320 or a 737, therefore 90% of people don't give a shit, so... Oh well. Yeah, that error sad, and that was just uh, FS Global timing out, because uh, the sim closed. What's my favourite plane to fly? Urgh. Hmm. Good question. Probably, um, I don't know, it depends on my mood really. If I feel like doing something really heavily involved, where I have to be doing, constantly doing things and constantly actively flying in the aircraft, I love flying the Fly J Sim 737-200 with the, um, the Seaver INS um, and that sort of thing. That's really good fun if you want to actually work for your fun. <laughs> If I'm feeling lazy, on the other hand, I love the Aerosoft A320. I know it gets a lot of shit, but um, I, I do enjoy it. And if I'm feeling a bit middle of the road, I go I'll go, and, go and fly the 767. Uh, 
There are certain YouTubers that seem to dislike the 767, so you get a lot of undeserved flack. Mmm, I wonder who that could be. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Is there, is there a shared cockpit thing on, on the way for the 767? At some point, because that would be quite nice. Next time I get a hold of Matt, I'll just sort of flat out say to him, look, mate, you need to you need to go back and fly that plane again because, you know, you haven't flown it since, like, the original release version. Even though the, the patches were out, you refused to install them, you silly bastard. Um, so, yeah. Max is working on the 767 config. Oh, good to know. Good to know. Excellent. I know I know. people have been beavering away at the MD-80 co-pilot thing, um, smart co-pilot thing, but um, I, I have to be honest with you, I don't really care about the MD-80. So... My only real complaint with the 767 at the minute is that the cockpit, that the font on the panels in the cockpit are the wrong font. And uh, that's truly the extent of my issues with that plane. <laughs> Says a lot, really, I suppose. Um, that's a weird flight factor thing, though. They've always got the font wrong on their, um, on their planes. I don't know why. It's a bit strange. Oh, it's something I didn't initially notice and still, until someone pointed it out to me and then I couldn't not notice that the uh, the font was wrong. So. What has been seen cannot be seen, as they say, you know. So. Yeah. I've, I've, oh. Yeah. Anyway, next time we'll be flying the 767 because I'm still... Now we've had our little holiday in South Africa with the Exeg. I'm going to go back to trying to work my way through the 767 schedules with BA Virtual. So next will either be Frankfurt or uh, or Cairo. I ain't decided which. Or if we're feeling really fucking masochistic, Philadelphia. But I'm not sure about that. Maybe Cairo. I know is as, as a route is due to close very soon in the real world, and therefore it'll be. It'll be knocked off the Bav Ledger as well, so I do want to get that done soon, just to be able to say that I have done it. Um, I'm kind of running around chasing all the long haul routes before they close at the minute, so. And then hopefully, if I can figure it out that way, I mean, I, I, I'll, to be honest with you, I'll just do it even if it's not logged with Bav. Um, but the last flight I do in the 767, I think once I've done the whole schedule, I'll do the Victorville retirement flight from like uh, Heathrow or Cardiff or wherever over to. Uh, Victorville. That'll be a bit of a grueling one. It's like 10 hours, I think, in total. That flight's ridiculous, but, you know, it'll be a fitting send-off before I move on to something else. I know Mungo's nagging me to fly the 777s, so... And I, I, I probably will. It, it depends, because, uh, I mean, if the, if the PMDG 747 version 2 comes out, I might end up just moving straight to that instead, but I don't know. Because who doesn't love a 747? And I want to do some more sort of flying in World War II aeroplanes as well. Like that, that, we pissed around Scotland in the Mosquito the other day. That was really good fun. Like, I really enjoyed that, actually. I need to do that more often. I need to get the Texan out again. And maybe the Lancaster and the B-17. So. Before you ask Rage, because I know you're going to. I haven't I haven't tried the um, the Camson P-51 yet. I do. I did buy it. I haven't downloaded it yet. Um, but I will give it a go. So, we'll see. We'll see how it is. Since I've already flown the uh, combined the DCS P-51 and the A2A P-51 for probably about 100 hours at least in total... Um, I'm probably going to be casting a very super critical eye on the um, on the Camson one, but we'll see how it stands up. 
I know I know for one thing from watching um, Aerosim Gaming or whatever his name is, the Australian fella uh, here on Twitch. I watched him fly it for a bit, and um, I noticed that it, the 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 engine cuts out if you give it negative G, which it shouldn't do in a P51D. So there's that little inaccuracy, but I don't know anything else about it so far. So. And at some point, I'll get off my lazy ass and play around with the Jetstream 32. Actually, come to think of it, some turboprop funsies. I could fly the Saab, but the Saab likes to nom 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 on my frame rate, so <laughs> I'll fly the Jetstream instead. The Saab is good, though, mind you. But uh, yeah, it does it does hurt the frame rate a little bit. On my system, anyway. You like the hit the barrel roll poster, yeah? I do. I'm, I'm quite pr pleased with that one myself. I don't mind saying, blowing my own trumpet there a bit, but fuck it. Alright then, well, I hope you enjoyed that folks, um, I had a bit of fun, although I, I wish the plane hadn't broken halfway through the fucking flight, but the first one was great, the first flight went without, completely without incident, and what's ironic is the first flight I was using the apparently unstable patch, <laughs> so, so after after installing the revised updated one I got a gizmo crash, so there you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> It'll be fixed eventually. But at least I've learned not to mess with the gross weight in the FMC anymore. I will never touch that again, so long as I live. <sighs> no, we, it's, it's funny that we always joke about prepared being fine China, but I mean... Yeah, as a platform it's fine China, but as a bloody... Um, what do you call it? it, it it's air, it's aircraft are pretty stable. It's it's X plane. It's the other way around. The the planes are fine, China. You need to you need to know exactly what buttons you're not allowed to press. Otherwise, the plane will self destruct. Whoa! What the fuck? Oh my days! All right, you know what, guys? I need to show you these. Uh, Mickey over on uh, ACG just posted these screenshots in our X plane thread. At the it's fucking real Terra Haze and photo scenery are off the fucking scale, right? You what, look at this, right? Oh no, he he didn't post those. He found them on the X Pilot forums. You've probably already seen these, then actually. But uh, yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah, I didn't think Mickey's sim looked that good. Uh. My main. There we go. Look at that. Look at it. Hmm. <laughs> one day, one day, I shall have X plane looking as good as that. One day. What is he? He's probably using Max FX or like um, I don't know, some sort of ENB or something. He must be. Whoever this fellow is. Jesus. Mm. Bloody hell. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a photo as well. I had looked very, very closely and then I scrolled down to the virtual cockpit photos and I was like, well, oh, bloody hell. Somebody wouldn't probably wouldn't seem as real with clouds, yeah, true. <laughs> Do you think we'll ever get a sim that gets clouds completely right? Probably not. Do Concord again. Oh yeah, I will at some point, don't worry about that. 
I have to wait till I get to 500 hours to log it officially with BAV Concorde flights, but um, I'm not going to wait till then. Alright, well, anyway. Cheers, everybody. I'm gonna fuck off, play some XCOM 2, and watch Cat Straight to stream, because I pr presumably he's streaming by now, I should think. Uh, so, yeah. Have a good one, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow, 4 pm onwards. Uh, I've got fuck all done this week, haven't I, in the way of video production? It's exactly the opposite of what I said I was going to be doing, but never mind. I've just been doing streams all the time, because I streamed on Thursday as well, so. Uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'll be back tomorrow, 4 p.m. onwards. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what I'll be doing. I might be doing some flying, I might be doing some games. I'll decide then. I I will admit, I got, I, I've got i got Stalker up and running again. Um, Shadow of Chernobyl with, with Autumn Aurora and everything. And I ran it up earlier and it seems to work with my new mouse properly again. So, might play some Stalker. I don't know. We'll see. Or some Kerbal Space Program, or, or whatever, 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 man, I'll, I'll figure it out. Anyway, toodles! Have a good one. Bye. I'll uh, catch you next time. Oh, go watch Cat Strader, by the way. Uh, I'd post a link in chat, but Nightbot will delete my link, because I'm not permitted, <laughs> ironically. So, yeah, I'll, I'll check in my host, and yeah. Anyway, see ya!